Damaris, you and I on a date, Brussels sprouts come, we're splitting. And I go, oh, wow. Okay, not the way. <laughs> Look how that <laughs> <that's> shoulder <laughs> was. What you, 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 you would never I'm allowed you, to enjoy you food like, like that. I can't that. do yeah, that. You did it gay. But me and, when we <laughs> had the Brussels sprouts. You did it gay. Yeah, <laughs> Julian was like, oh. Like, Julian was like, oh, wow, these are good. Like, we were oh, surprised. Oh, wow. <laughs> Julian is What's gay. What's he watching Sex in the City? <laughs> He's also a gay <laughs> man. <laughs> and it's okay. No worry at Maul, being a parent is exhausting. I don't get much sleep at all. But what has helped me a lot is the Hello Mood morning gummies. They energize me. I can get my day started off limited sleep. Mm -hmm. They have saved my life in this, this whole parent thing. I like taking the uh, Hello Mood morning gummies right before workout, too. Mm. I think it gives you that, that little kick, nice little joke. Yeah. like it. They have something for every mood. Tested and tailored by in-house experts. Different strains for specific moods, from euphoric to energized, creative to chill and plenty of versatile products that go with whatever mood you're going for. Add more relaxation to your summer plans with Mood. For a limited time only, get 20% off your first order and a free THCA pre-roll. Just go to hellomood.com and use promo code Rory Mall. That's hellomood.com, code Rory Mall for 20% off your order and a free THCA pre-roll. All right, man. So we're back. We are back. Yo, listen. So how how did Amara? I know you had Amara's cast removed. Uh, yes. This week, I know that was a, like a real trying, tough time for you as a as a first time father. Mm -hmm. If this was like your third kid, this would probably be whatever. Nothing. Yeah, it's like all right, man, whatever. That's like, but this Ke is your first Kevin time. Kevin You right. forget they're even like there at they're that point. Exactly. But this is your first time. Mm -hmm. How was it? Um, the cast actually wasn't as bad as an experience as I thought it would be. She handled it like a champ. You should have seen the female dog that I turned into when that saw came out to saw her cast off. The cast off. Oh, the little like, handheld? I thought, I'm thinking with kids, like they probably soak it and then it's just going to like demummify de them or something. Like there's no way they break out your, the saw. Your daughter, your daughter wasn't mummified. She, <laughs> she just had a cast off. It is kind of like mummifying someone though. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, they're taking like, you know, arts and crafts. It's like paper and, mache. Yeah, yeah. Just putting it around their leg. Remember we used to have to build a volcano? With mm -hmm. the toilet tissue roll and yeah, mm. kind of like yeah, it's kind of the same thing. It was a wild motion. Yeah, that was um, crazy. that was like that was, that was crazy. And then you went back flashback. and did it again. You went back and did it. Wow, you doubled back on flashbacks. it. Flashbacks. <laughs> I just had flashbacks. My bad. You pepper oh, grinded the volcano. Flashbacks. No, just in a you know night with a young lady. But yeah, anyway, you were the Coca Cola. What, what's the mix that made the uh, Mountain? Not Mountain Dew. Uh, Coke and Mentos. Mentos. Yeah. She Mentos you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I almost. Hit an octave I've never hit when that saw started. How did Amara do? She was cool. She was crying because it, like it's loud. Okay. But she wasn't really looking at the saw. I'm staring at the saw, holding her arms and her leg to like make sure she doesn't throw a finger into the saw. Yeah. And like this guy is just casually sawing something off a toddler's leg. She's, like it's nothing. Yeah, yeah but aren't they sa soft saws? They don't cut. They don't pierce skin. Yeah. No, they don't. That. Looks like it could pierce some skin. But it's just the, the noise and the fact that it is something cutting. People assume like it's a saw that you fucking cut four by fours with, but it's not. It's just specifically for that, for the cast. You would have yeah. swore I was getting my entire cast off. Well, I'm, I'm glad she's terrified. A, it, was, it was like a, a scene out of Saw. I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad Amara took it better than you did. <laughs> she said, yeah, she rubbed my back. Yeah. She, she helped <laughs> Held my ear, told me, told me to calm down. Helped you through it's it. It's going to be okay. Well, Wait, everything, was, healed, everything healed up. Yeah, good. Every, everything's good. Now she's just got like a stupid boot on her leg, which takes about another week. But she's moving around. So it was cool. All right, we're good. Uh, prayers for Amara and a speedy recovery for her. Yeah. Prayers for you too, Dad. I mean, I know that was a, a tough time for you. Um, I found out uh, my mom took Amara to like some type of mass over Memorial Day weekend. Like mm. she had Amara, like she went for a walk. <laughs> and just walk, and walk to a mass? And Dunk. you guys know... That area that I live by, mm -hmm. they were doing like some memorial service mass shit in the graveyard right over there. Okay. So I found out my mom, who I caught trying to secretly baptize Amara in a bathtub. Really? <laughs> then wait, snuck, wait, then snuck my baby to a graveyard so she could go to a Catholic <laughs> mass. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Your mom tried to secretly baptize yes. her grandchild. Her, one of her close friends did it with her daughter's kid. That's where she got the idea. And then I was like, mom, you're not a priest. Like, you yeah, can't. like, I don't know about to say, is your mom like, is what, she a, what original sin are you? Like, what she's is next that? to a rubber ducky. Yeah, like, what is she, YouTube that? YouTube how to baptize your... Her friend told her how to do it. 
She's trying your to save Amara's soul. Yeah, but your friend can't tell you how to bat. That's not how that goes. Your yeah, but what, not do you, what do you put in the water? Like you could like Epsom salt. Like what makes it Jesus water? I don't really know what the process was, except for hey, what are you doing? Right. Why yeah. is there a Bible in in the bathroom when there wasn't? <laughs> this is in a hotel room. <laughs> Yo, wait. So your mom tried to baptize her. Yes. And you walked in on it. Mm hmm. Was it like a? Was it like the lights off? Like what was the? No, it was just a setting with a Bible, and that was. I was like, "What are you doing with a Bible?" And then she confessed. Naturally, um, she's like, "I'm reading." <laughs> that is some of the funniest yeah. and scariest. So my I've friend ever. Annie baptized her granddaughter secretly in a bathtub, and I was trying to do the same thing. At least in that moment, it was like a reconciliation. She okay. didn't lie. She did confess yeah. her sins to me. Okay, naturally, right? The Bible's right here. I can't I, lie in front of the Bible. I just well, Kendrick said you could hide it. Man, none of that. Just let her throw some ashes. <laughs> let her throw some ashes on Amara's head and dunk her head in some water. It doesn't fucking matter. Just let her do it for peace of mind. What? None of that shit matters. It, does, it matters. On my, to but it doesn't matter to him or Kia. So, so let her no, do it, it to make her feel good about herself and then just Kia. let it go away. I wouldn't particularly care. I just think it would be weird to try to do it like at a church that I didn't go to. Right. Like pulling up somewhere in Jersey City to try to like bat to like, yo, we don't go here. But can I learn? Yeah, that's just so such a random thing to walk in the bathroom and just see. Like, you're trying to baptize. I, I don't know. I just I've never heard of that before. Yeah, is that white people shit? Catholicism? Yeah, it's pretty white. I was yeah. baptized, but again, in a bathroom, like in a, in no, a like spot, properly. Right? No, nah, they dunked me. Well, yeah, the church. Yeah, the church. Well, yeah. they dunk you hard we've enough, all, baby. We've all been there. Nah, just a little wet. Uh, yeah, that water was like that, was it is, like, just that shit turned black. That was fish tank water. It just activated my curls. Yeah. But then you got to like just start thinking about why you get baptized and like original sin. And then you just have so many other questions that put you in a dark rabbit hole of shit. Yeah. Like what? What are, Incest? Is that the original sin? What are we doing here? That's one of them. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are we doing? Definitely she ate one. the apple. There was a snake from a rib. She was hungry. Mm -hmm. Y'all were the two, two first people here. Y'all was fucking. That's weird. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad Amara's well, okay. My mother was my Sunday school teacher forever. And and so uh and I wasn't baptized. allowed to ask questions. All good. Um, so yeah, back another week. Uh some more interesting things have come out since we've been gone. Let's get into it. I kind of wanted like a, a cleanse. This is a selfish thing. I wanted a cleanse this week of anything puff related mm -hmm. or Drake related for that matter. Two things that I could not escape this entire week. I didn't fully get through this Rolling Stone article that is about Puff and what they've been doing for the last six months, talking to former bad boy employees, artists, people that were around them, family. I get it. And this is important. Yeah. But I needed like a week to just not think about Puff and his nasty behavior. But I don't think timeline wouldn't let me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think this is something that's going away anytime soon. I think, unfortunately, this is just the very beginning of it. Um, I think that, you know, as more things come out, we are most likely going to come to realize that a lot of the things, rumors and gossips that we've heard over the years about uh, Puff and his lifestyle that we kind of just like waved off and was like, yeah, right. I think, unfortunately, we are going to find out that some, if not most of those things are indeed true. This I know the media was like really sick. Outside of the Rolling Stone article, at the top of the week, there was a headline saying the feds have uncovered a video of Puff victimizing a male prostitute in his house or some shit. Yeah. And then they used a picture of Puff in like the shower, in like the fetal position. And that's what I had to scroll past for at least 72 hours. Why is that Puff's Getty image? <laughs> He's like curled up in the shower like this mm. and the water's just coming down on him. And that's the photo they chose to spread all this news. What does that symbolize? <laughs> Sodomy in a shower? I don't yeah, know. I, don't, I don't know. The washing of his sins. Oh, see, mm. your, mom, Baptism. your mom should've gave Puff a... a <laughs> I mean, that's what Puff is going to yeah. do. Yeah. He's going to start a church. He's going to be reborn. Christianity. That's definitely going to happen. So I don't know. Maybe this is the photo that he sent <laughs> to media. I this was it. his press pick. was like, yo, all right, if you're going to do this shit, at least get the one of washing the sins off me. It's funny that you say that because I went to see- like a locker room shower, though. I went to see- um, Is that the why? I went to see Mona, Don't Call Me White Girl. She had a live podcast- Really? In Jersey the other day. So I went to see her. I went to check her out because- uh, she was in Brooklyn, I think, last week, and I didn't know about that show. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my guy, Tom, uh, one of the producers and uh, hosts on the show. Um, been supporting him for a while. Happy to see his growth and everything. Um, but shout out to Mona. She's super dope, super funny. Uh, had a great show. Um, if you ever get a chance to go see her, 
It's worth it. Shout out to Mona. Much love and respect to her. And she said that um, I told her we're in Philly uh, soon in July. So she said um, she's definitely going to come by and, and and come come see us. So shout out to Mona. Don't call me white girl. Shout out to Tom. Shout out to Phelps. Mona is fucking hilarious. No, she's she's very funny. She's funny. But that was that was one thing that she said at the show. She was like, oh, y'all know it. You know what Puff going to do. He going, you know, go to turn into the, the, the pastor. T.D. Jakes. Yeah. That's his man's. Yeah. Like he's going to yeah. whatever. I, I, I unfortunately With his don't, disciple, King Los. Go soak yeah, his I don't, feet some water. I don't think that that's going to happen. I could see it happening if maybe some of the things that the feds are investigating, they weren't under investigation. Um, I do think that it's going to be some severe jail time uh, at the end of this, though. So I don't know if that is going to be possible. I don't know if the church route is going to be possible. I think I think he will go to jail, but I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get him on some of like the major crimes. Mm. Like we already saw with the Cassie thing, the statute of limitations and all that. I think he's going to find his way out of the charges that could like land him in jail for over 20 years. But mm-hmm. I think he will sit down for a little bit yeah. and come out reborn and... You know, it's all about Jesus and we all have to heal. And who are we as Christians to judge somebody? Yeah, but I don't know if but people make can, sure you donate to him. I don't know if people can support somebody that because, you know, people, you know, when people usually turn to church, it's usually things, you know, tax evasion, uh, things like that. Uh, when it's, you talk about some of these crimes and uh, that he's being alleged of committing, I don't see how he can go do jail time, come home, start, uh, you know, become a pastor and start a, his own church and people will actually go and support it because of the charges and the allegations that, especially after seeing a, the video of- Well, I mean- can, I don't see people going to a church to watch him speak out. No, I mean, it can fit the church narrative. The same way we were talking about um, with like Republican news spots, this fit their democratic narrative as far as how nasty Democrats are. He could walk into a church and say the music industry is the devil. It took yeah. over me. I went in as a Christian man. My mother raised me this way. Then I got into the industry and the devil took me over. And then finally I got rid of the devil. Like this I is set caught. up. Perf- this <laughs> is it. I'm, I'm not, I'm not gays no more. Whatever that, that gay guy said. Oh, I don't, I don't like men's anymore. <laughs> I don't like men's no more. Damn, Roy, you seem like you thought about this. This your, your way out too? No way out. Mm. Like you see, like you, that was like thought out. <laughs> so mad. I can never listen to that album again. Great album. No, I didn't think this th- through, but I've, <laughs> you've seen this with pastors on like a lower level. If you really get into a lot of pastors from your neighborhood and who they were before, it gets a little nastier than like maybe they were doing home invasions were just on the wrong side of the tracks. Mm-hmm. Some of them were nasty as fuck and this was their way out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and uh, they'll, they'll even give you fucking hints in their sermons sometimes. Speaking of No Way Out, one of the sickest things from this article is when Biggie passed, uh, the cover of Rolling Stone was going to put Biggie on it, but Puff said, fuck that, put me on it, because he wanted to use it as an opportunity to promote his album, No Way Out. Um, So, you know, he said, I was telling Sean, here's a quote from the article, I was telling Sean, let's make it Biggie, you still have a chance for the cover in the future, Burroughs, the rep from Rolling Stone recalls. He was like, no, he's dead, I'm putting out his album, No Way Out in July. I need to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. And then this is the official cover that came out. Burroughs was actually, I think, uh, he may have been, he worked for Bad Boy. Or, sorry. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, anyway. Biggie is that just, a fake tattoo? Does he have a big tattoo or do they just do that for the cover? If that's uh, just for the cover, that's nasty. Probably for the cover. Yeah, I think that was just for the cover. I mean, he might. I don't know. I've never looked at Puff's chest like that. but Neither have I. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. I don't, I don't know which tattoo he has on his chest but um you know a lot of these things now looking you know now that we have a lot of these things to go back to and look at of course things are going to look a lot different now with some of these uh you know the information and in the confessions and the interviews that we're getting from a bunch of people a lot of things from you know such a prestigious monumental era in music and hip hop um, from one of the most iconic labels, a lot of these things are going to start to look a lot different. Mm. A lot of these things are going to start to come across a lot different. And that's one of the things that, you know, I'm looking down the line at is like how much of my childhood and things that I thought was super cool and dope and how much of that changes and looks completely fucked up now. Yeah. That's one of the things that I've been thinking about with this whole uh, Puff situation. Um, You know, I'm a, I'm a little older than everybody in the room. So I remember that time uh, better than most of y'all. And it was a, um, 
it was a really dope time and dope moment just for music, for hip hop, for New York. Yeah, you guys remind us how much cooler it was in our era. Yeah, pretty oh, often. Oh, so much, so much cooler. <laughs> but um, but is, wouldn't even let me like Nelly. But 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 is it cooler though? Now you see what I'm saying? Like now with a lot of this shit. A lot of this shit ain't cool. I don't know. I, I unfortunately feel like abuse is across the board for generations. For oh yeah, generation. Every generation has this. Uh, I don't. It's, I don't know it's if it's any different abuse. than mine because I don't think it's a hip hop problem. I think it's a life problem. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm sure my era has its fair share of abusers as well that will come to the light soon, and some that have already come to the light. But everyone just kept scrolling. Yeah. So I mean, I hear you, but I don't think my generation is any different. I don't think the generation before you was any different. Hopefully, generation after us will be, but mm. I don't know. Well, my daughter didn't get baptized. So. I gotta, I gotta read that Rolling Stone article, Julian. I know you said you read it. Um, yeah, uh, a couple of things that were just circulating the timeline. I mean, it just kind of em emboldens what we've learned from Diddy this whole thing. But there, it's cool because there's more personal anecdotes. So, like Wendy Williams is firing from Hot 97 was directly caused because she called Diddy gay on air, and he wasn't playing that, so <laughs> he had her removed from the station. Um, she had a gay list. Do you remember Wendy Williams' gay list? Yeah. Well, she was one for one. At least she had Diddy, right? Uh, and then uh, Biggie, this was also, again, rumors swirling around the time of Biggie's death. He was ready to leave uh, Puff because he wanted to own his publishing. There was a lot of legal battles. Puff was had him in like a chokehold uh, creatively and financially. And, and Biggie was very much ready to get out of that deal right before his um, passing. Yeah, him and, him and On were trying to go to, to Epic. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, you know... Outside of the nasty sexual stuff, it's just a lot of uh, control and power on everybody that he came in contact with, whether it be from the label employee side to the to the artist side as well. So it's just it kind of reaffirms what we knew, but just with more personal anecdotes. It's a really good read. too. Yeah, I saw some people from Howard that he went to school with were discussing. Oh, he was a terrible stuff. person in college. In oh, my God. And it, it was it was a lot of the stuff that I did read. I didn't read the entire thing, but the excerpts were. More nasty shit, more believable shit, but yeah, it will remain to be seen what happens. Like, I'm happy the stories are getting out, but what's going to be done with it? What's going to be the consequences? Andre Harrell got rid of him, created distance from him and his whole thing, and then that kind of unfortunately became like the spark that's that let Puff on his own develop at what became Bad Boy. But yeah, yeah it's just it's sickening and you can just see the dominoes falling on in in place to make someone that's already deranged because to your point at howard he was a demon even in college before he had any money any real notoriety he was an awful person then so yeah you know so even uh valetta wallace which i don't think this was in the rolling stone article but they did cover a quote of her saying she wants to slap the daylight out of puff yep to get getting a, a christian jamaican woman to say that you got to do some nasty shit. Yeah, and you know, for for Miss Wallace to say that, um, that means that you know, she's heard or learned enough to be at that point where she feels like, you know, those are the words she wants to say. Because she's Miss Wallace doesn't. I've never. I, I thought that was a fake quote. That's so why I was like, <laughs> wait, what is that? Because mm -hmm. I've never seen Miss Wallace being quoted speaking that way. Or um, you know, talking that way. So she's obviously upset about some some findings and some things that she's learned. Um, I'm pretty sure she's had uh years of people telling her things that she probably didn't believe or didn't think were going on. Um she's been kind of vocal, I feel like, since Big's passing against Puff. I mean, they were cordial at one well, point. Well, more so what that but, was more so on the business side yeah. of things, though. Because I mean, she wasn't around like that. Yeah. She was home. Yeah. So, I mean, she had her gripes about business stuff, but I'm sure she has had conversations with C's, Kim, people that were around some nasty shit and heard her, her fair share of stories. They said, like, in the article, you I never knew this, but Puff, his nickname came from, they said he, when he was younger, when he would get angry, which was often, he would often huff and puff. Oh, he was one of them... <gasps> Yeah, he one of kids. Of, one oh. of, literally, when I read that, I pictured those kids I used to teach in Chicago. They used to hold their breath. Had some anger issues, and you'd see them in the back of the class, like, oh, that's nah. puff. Mm -hmm. like Nobody this, saw the red flags from like, that. That that shit starts when you're exact. That shit starts when you're in grade school, like, yeah. th and then that develops over time. You become a man. You have strength now, and then physical rage is your most uh, easiest way to, to get out your anger. You can't communicate. You hit shit. Like I don't think that's a mentally ill. I just think that's bad. 
like parenting, learning pattern behaviors. Like that's all it starts. That's like developmentally stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think like he went crazy. But, but that's my, okay. And you're, and you're correcting what you're saying. But again, I'm speaking to you would, we've never really seen signs that would lead us to think that he was like that. Well, we're not hanging we, out. Well, you yeah, it wasn't next to him. Yeah, you don't show that oh, type of stuff. If we were in college with him, I'm him. sure we would have. Yeah. Like, sounds like plenty of people saw him abuse people. But we've seen, even then, like, we've seen people that are public figures that we, in, in, in any capacity that we see them, whether it's, you know, t television, radio, whatever, you can kind of pick up on things like... Like who? I mean, it's been... A few people that we've seen. I mean, I no name really jumps out at the top of my head because I'm focused on this. But my thing is sometimes you can kind of see people and be like, yo, something, something is off with this dude right here. So I think... Like, to me, Puff has done a great job at kind of masking all of that and kind of like keeping that... For somebody that's been in the spotlight, under the spotlight that he's been under so long, he's been able to keep that away from it better than... Anybody that I could probably think of that was under this type of spotlight for so many years. Like, it's like, bro, how many how many people have worked under him and been around him that now we understand that know that they're, they're doing interviews and they're talking about it? But like, these people never really spoke to this until a few years ago. I mean, Kanye, he's been Kanye the, West, you didn't need to be next to or be around to know that he probably has some mental health issues. Right. Puff, but again, I'm, Puff's also a businessman where Kanye is a super creative and doesn't really give a single fuck how he comes across. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where Puff, being the good businessman that he is, will know how to mask everything because he's so brand aware mm -hmm. of what he's saying, what he's doing, how he's being perceived. To me, that's not mental illness. And I think there are narcissists that have mental illness, but not every narcissist is mentally ill. Some of them are just fucking ego-driven and terrible human beings. Like, that also exists too. I don't think you mental be health mental, but you should be always be held. a reason for everything per se. But no, you could be mentally ill and still be a shitty person. Like mental illness does not it does not like oh, take away, absolutely. oh, you're not a shitty person because you're mentally yeah, ill. No, you could be sure. a mentally it's ill piece of shit. Yeah, absolutely. That type of behavior, to be able to turn that on and off like that, that's a mental, something is off mentally. Something is like off balance. For you to be able to be this person that they're alleging in these lawsuits and these, in these, in these documents, and obviously the feds have seized video footage for you to have that going on and to be able to kind of like jump in and out of that world and into a world where people know that none of that is going on. That's something mentally that's like, how are you able to do that? I, I think hush money plays more into it than having some mental illness to turn it on and off. Because mm. like we said before, Puff did that shit in a public hallway. And when we're reading about this Howard shit, he's been doing shit in hallways forever. He doesn't know when to turn it off and when to turn it on. He knows how to clean it up. Yep. Mm. I think a mentally ill person would know how to turn that rage and only do it privately. And that's a whole different mind state, I think. I think Puff is Puff all the time and just knows how to move. Knows yeah. who to pay. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I think that, you know, again, this is something that is just the beginning of the end, obviously. And um, there's more to come and more things that we are going to learn that are unfortunate and nasty and dark and disgusting. And, you know, I think that we've all heard things, obviously, Rory, over the years. And, you know, we kind of say, nah, there's no fucking way and ignore a lot of shit. Um, I think a lot of those things, unfortunately, are going to be proven to be real and true and actually did happen. So as much as we don't want to continue talking about this type of shit, <laughs> I think that we are going to have to because there's going to be more to come so yeah um another generational thing that i think your your generation invented didn't escape my timeline all week ghost writing that's mm -hmm. y'all swag that's our swag yeah you guys invented ghost ghost writing i don't think people know what ghost writing is though. i don't think they do either rapper's delight that's ghost writing yeah but ghost writing means that somebody wasn't credited for writing yes I think that all of these songs or reference tracks that are coming out, um, I'm, I don't check all of, you know, the, Spooky. the credits and things like that, but I'm pretty sure all of these people have been credited on all of these records. Before we get into this, who do you think really coined that term? Do you think it was Kanye, college dropout, when he was telling the story of ghost writing, I'm sorry, ghost producing for D-Dot, and then D-Dot came out and was like, bro, you were credited on everything, got paid. That's not ghost producing. Yeah. Like, you worked on records with me. Mm -hmm. You got your credit. 
you're in the Harlem world credits. Yeah. You got paid. You did not ghost produce. Mm -hmm. You collabed with me. Mm -hmm. Do we think Kanye started this this whole ghostwriting? No, that thing? ghostwriting was a old. term way before. Started, no, I know that, but I'm saying this, this craze and this focus on it. I don't think it was uh, really a thing until no, Kanye think, became such a superstar that he kind of forced people, the way 50 forced people to look at numbers, I almost feel like Kanye forced people to look at credits when he just kept rapping about, yo, I did this blueprint beat. I did this. Yo, just did this. Like, Well, I think in this situation, I think the the Meek and Drake battle is what caused people to start using this term when it comes to Drake um, and saying he doesn't write, which is, I, you know, I'm, again, they, they kill me anytime I speak about Drake, but whatever. Uh, I'm just tired of talking about this because he's never said he hasn't worked on records with people. These artists are credited on these songs. Um, he's been very vocal about working with artists, liking to work with different artists on records. The artists that he's worked with have spoken about their their um, contribution to records. Uh, most notably, Quentin Miller mm -hmm. um, was very vocal about the album when he was came to the studio was pretty much done. Um, Drake definitely writes his shit, even with this new uh, reference track that leaked. Would uh, I believe Vori? Vori did Mob Ties. Uh, yeah, Vori, and then, uh, PND did Ratchet Happy Birthday. I believe Vori did. He he referenced what sounds like the hook. Um, when you listen to and the it, flow, in the case, yeah. which is cool. I'm just but the, the, the verse, the actual lyrics in the verse is Drake. If you listen to the album, I don't yeah. I don't hear Vori referencing any of Drake's. There's verse. Some, he clearly came up with cadences and came up with certain stuff, but <laughs> but I kind of I kind of don't care. I mean, it's not about caring. <laughs> that it's just like, that I, people in the moment I'm right now. I'm not as outraged as no, everyone no, no, else. But this, is, but this is part of the newfound hatred for Drake and people that don't like Drake. And he doesn't write. And he's he, he has people writing his verses and all his records. This is just the moment that we're in right now. All of a sudden, Drake doesn't write anything. Even though your favorite artists are on these same YouTube channels saying that he's written verses and songs for them. But... You know, when tracks like this come out and then leak, Drake does all of a sudden, he doesn't write his own shit. I mean, he's vocal about loving to work with Party on records, which is his artist. So the happy birthday, the ratchet happy birthday song, that reference leak. Again, you can hear the differences. Yes, did Party lay the idea? Does he, if is he referencing the idea, cadence, flow? Yes. For Ratchet Happy Birthday, the lyrics as well. But that but he always talks about working with party, like party writing shit for him. Like he, that's um, not the, he, that's the, why we say ghosts. It's like he's he's spoken about yeah, this. I, if you're reading this, it's too late. I'm a legend. Love that intro. One of my favorite Drake intros. There's a full reference of parties doing that. Right. Like <clears throat> even people that aren't in the industry or in the know, like if you're just a nerd and are on the internet. There's a million references to Drake records that aren't the Quentin Miller ones, that aren't the Mob Ties ones, like right. that aren't certain party records. Like he's been doing this forever. And I guess I just don't really care. No, well, this is the time. Uh, but this I know the outrage and why it's coming. Because before when the Quentin Miller shit happened, oh, holy shit, that's crazy. Drake survived it. Because all of us were like, all right, cool. He's a pop star. A lot of that shit was still rap records, but... Mm -hmm. It was hits, like it's it's cool. It yeah. was a hook. As long as it's not the timestamp ones. Mm -hmm. I think the more this shit comes out, the closer some of us are getting to, all right, man, there might be a timestamp reference one day. It's just it's getting us closer <clears throat> to us not making excuses anymore. Cause it's just so many records at this point. And we're getting closer and closer to, all right, man, what happens when 5 a.m. in Toronto comes out? Yeah, no, I don't think that that's happening though. Mm. It doesn't feel like it's just a few records anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm saying perception-wise. I look through credits because I'm a nerd. How many reference tracks have leaked? Oh, man. Countless. I, not I, too I, many. I don't to even count. know how many yeah. at this point. How many timestamps? Uh, no no timestamp records. Yeah. Zero. Well, how many, many timestamp records, records are there? There's only like there's seven only like times. Six or seven, yeah. Records. How many of his verses, bars, have leaked? Or reference tracks for those? Like with people rapping, Drake's raps, not his vibe records like Mob Ties. And those. I'm talking about rapping. How many of that, how many reference tracks of those have leaked? 
I don't. I'm all, I can't tell you off the top of my head, but I will say everyone that's listening to this will just say you're just moving the goalposts. How am I moving the goalposts for something that has been spoken about years ago? I understand in the moment people want to discredit Drake. He lost the battle. Kendrick raps better than him. Drake is a terrible artist. He doesn't write none of his shit. Well, to be He's fair, this isn't rapper. in the moment because these conversations were had during the Quentin Miller thing. I don't care but about if the, the mo- conversation was had, did they not hear Quentin say his album was already done and Drake writes all of his raps? Did they not hear that part? No, of course not. Exactly. So why do I have to be here sit it, to say it and then be called a glazer for another two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> fair. Like, um, Quentin Miller said it. Kanye listen, West said it. I agree with you. Like, they've the been, tear, they been tearing about? me up on Twitter for forever because I said, like, this is this is a vibe record. I don't I wasn't expecting Drake to be writing these. I don't think Drake writes the majority of his music. Like his music. I'm like, why does he have to be Brian Michael Cox and fucking come up with hooks and melodies and all of that shit? Like, and they're like, oh, fucking Jay-Z doesn't have any reference tracks. And then I just shut up and I don't say nothing because if I say what I want to say, y'all gonna call me, y'all gonna call me a hater. And it's really not that, but Jay don't make songs like Drake makes songs and he doesn't make They're two different type songs. of artists. Like yeah, I said, Drake. when you start hearing when he's a pop artist. You start showing me dudes that's like with Drake rap his bars, like Wick Man and all of that and those type of first person shooter. You start showing me reference tracks of those and niggas spitting those bars. Oh, then I come on here and say something, something totally different. I start speaking differently. But I know that that's something that's not going to happen because it's been cemented already by the guys that work with Drake that go in the studio with him. And they're telling you out of their mouths, not me, these writers, these artists are saying the dude definitely writes his own raps. What are people talking about? All right, t- but I understand t- in the moment. I get it. I understand everybody. This is this is the, the season for discrediting Drake and everything that he's done and accomplished thus far. I get it. The same way you talked about with the Cole thing, like he can't talk as greasy anymore because of certain things. That's where I feel like a lot of fans are at now with the amount of reference tracks that have came out with Drake. Like you never hear us say Kanye West is in the best MC category. Like we don't debate that because we know who Kanye is an artist. He's mm-hmm. a collaborator, he's a producer, he's, he's that. Mm-hmm. Always has been that. Drake has talked greasy like he is the greatest rapper of all time. He has been debated in barbershops with the likes of Hove, Nas, whether you like it or not. We've put Drake in that conversation. Mm-hmm. I think fans that are talking MC shit are starting to get to the point of like, all right, man, it's getting a little too far with some of these references. It's not just um, Majid, just hold on, we're going home. It's not just pop records anymore. So yeah, it's starting to have people feel like there's an asterisk. And I also don't think we'll ever get a timestamp record reference because I don't think that's how Drake collaborates when it comes to raps. So you, I don't think so there's you, so I don't you, think they'll never there will never so be a 9 a.m. in Dallas. Raps. Huh? You believe he writes his raps. I think Drake is a phenomenal writer, but I also think Drake collabs and gets a lot of help. I think there's been plenty of times he sat in a studio, like a lot of your favorite rappers, mm-hmm. and has had his collaborators in the room, feeding him lines. I think a lot of timestamp records, he's probably had help from Hush. He's admitted that he thinks Hush is the greatest rapper of all time. Mm-hmm. I think there's been plenty of timestamps where he's gotten help. But I also think there's been plenty of times where Hove has been fed lines. Mm-hmm. I think Nas has been fed lines. I think every great rapper has been fed lines. I think Drake maybe has been fed a little bit more than the average rapper because he's such a collaborator and has such a chemistry with his circle of people, including Hush, who's been with him forever. Who's, been, who's been in in the credits of Thank Me Later, of the thank yous. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Hush, for putting all these records together with me. Mm-hmm. So I don't think we'll ever get like a Hush 8 a.m. in Charlotte reference, because I don't think that's how he writes them. Mm-hmm. But I think Hush may write eight bars and Drake may rap that shit. Mm. But I think yeah, some I don't, of, I don't but think, I think some of my favorite rappers ever have done the same fucking thing. I agree. Yeah, but yeah. I don't I don't like, think that's why I don't I put agree. it on Drake I, like that. I agree, I agree that a lot of rappers probably do have people that they're in the studio with that, you know, feed throw lines and you should say it like this, that type of I've seen it. Um, but I'm talking about with Drake in particular, it's to the point where people are now starting to try to build this narrative that he doesn't write any of his raps. And that's to me what I'm just like, I can't entertain that conversation because it's just stupid. Because again, you have the same guys that are credited for collaborating and writing on certain songs. Mm -hmm. They're telling you out of their mouths, not me, not you. These guys are saying he absolutely writes his own raps. He writes his bars. Now, do we collaborate on 
style and sauce and certain records and vibes and shit like that? Of course. But when it comes to the bars and raps, not songs, not, you know, those type of records, I'm talking about bars. Do I believe? I believe Drake is writing his own bars, absolutely. So, and I, so I agree with you. Um, when it comes to mob ties, a lot of people are saying, and Drake has also kind of insinuated that mob ties was a response to the Pusha situation. So for you not to write that, I think a lot of people's feelings were hurt. I remember Julian texted a group chat like, damn, mob ties with the like the broken heart emojis and shit. Like, cause a lot of people felt like that was a response to Pusha. Yeah. And he But his raps on it, Vori is not rapping what Drake is rapping on that record. Is he rapping the hook and 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 the this this the style of the record and the cadence? Yeah. I'm talking about the bars on Mob Ties. Vor, Vori's not rapping that on that reference track. You don't hear him saying none of those bars that Drake is rapping. There's like one or two, but I, it's, re, it's not that big of a deal to me. Even is it? Because I would do what, what I just listened to. It's none of that is on there. What a GLE and another one fast. Some class, of it's there, but class, also the there's some bars on the future reference to Drunk yeah, and Love the, that nah, over nah, like certain small bars to get you to the next line. Like I again, that's collaborating. I don't really look at that as that crazy. No, I'm talking about when I he's think rapping. Dude caught a cool pocket and Drake followed the pocket, followed a lot of the tones, the background, that da, da, that shit, like all that. He Do followed that again, what? Do that again? Do that again? Listen. Because you are one. You could say it. I also like the original. I don't like that Drake changed that shit to... Nah, he uh, made it worse. I'm not with the rah-rah. I am a da-da. Yeah, I like that. I've hated that bar too. since Scorpion came out. Mm. But I like Mob Ties. This is before you were da-da. Mm. Ew. I, no, I'm still with the rah-rah. Okay. Got it. Hey, <laughs> gang. I am a da-da. That's, Clip it. That's from his, his church boy days. That's his Catholic. Those are his Catholic Catholic days, right? Because I was baptized. Amara could never. <laughs> I think uh, this, I think this is a a good um because I think what you guys are saying there's a lot of nuance to it, and I think there's so many people that are trying to be vocal about an industry or like a space of song creation that they know little to nothing God, it about. This is me off. So I think this is like a good educational moment. Like maybe before you tweet or jump in comments, just like understand what it means. What are the differences between a collaborator and a ghostwriter and those kind of things? Because it, it, there's a lot. There's a lot of kerfuffle. I'm not going to go to a mechanic and say that's the wrong tube. You're supposed to use this. I don't know what I'm talking about. But like with this, there are technical terms here which can lead to either understanding or just like piling on hate that already exists. And I'm not shooting Drake bail, but I think that there's like a lot more uh, to this if you just look a little more into it than just blanket statement. This sounds like Drake. This is Drake stole it. Like that's not what happened. When it comes to the music industry, Twitter, Rory was just talking about them. What was it with the Meg? They were talking about the Meg record deal mm. with um Rock Nation. I mean the the management manager oh, yeah. deal. Remember we were talking about that? Yeah, remind me again exactly what they it was. were saying that Meg, they were like, uh, well, Meg got a fucked up managerial deal. Um over at Rock Nation. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because somebody was in an interview talking about it. What was that? Who was that? It was um Sauce Walker was a great great rapper turned down a Rock Nation deal, and I, I have the quote of what it was, and I'm not shitting on him. More more so, music industry Twitter saying that this was like an awful deal. They offered me a management deal. Basically, it's a very um, fancy way of saying not being in a 360 contract, but something so close that it still made me uncomfortable, which is cool. That Sauce is if he doesn't want to do it, great. This means that they would participate in all other income streams, even though they're acting as management and not the label. That's weird for a management company to participate in all your 360 rights. That's a management deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a standard management deal. You get between 10 and 20% for the most part of every stream of income. Right. It's labels where that shit gets dicey and why they invented the 360 deal because they were not eating off tour and merch. Mm -hmm. Management has always, 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 always since the beginning of time Ate off your merch, ate off your tour, ate off your music. Mm -hmm. And then music industry Twitter was like, yo, see, this is why Meg signs the worst fucking deals. She's in another 360. No, nah, she's in a management deal. Right. So I see it with this, this ghost writing thing as well. They're pulling up, yo, Drake got 25 writers on one song. Yeah, there's also three samples that <laughs> also have 15 other writers on there from the sample. People, but again, <laughs> like, this is, but you got to understand what's happening specifically to this moment mm. is people are just going to try to piece together things and create these narratives to discredit Drake as an artist, as a writer, as a rapper, as an MC as much as possible. This is the pile on 
moment. He lost to Kendrick. He doesn't really write. He's not as dope as you think he is. Here's another reference track. Da, da, da. It's 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 that type of Pedophile. shit that's happening on right now. But you know, those that understand what's happening and what's been happening, and you know, that's it, that's all that matters. I think it just ha- it just again has to do with we've added Drake into that combo, so he's going to be compared amongst his his peers. Because I do mean that you, you can kill me if you want. I think Jay and Nas are his peers as far as rappers. Kill mm-hmm. me if you want. He's being compared that way. So yeah, this stuff does matter in that conversation. Mm-hmm. If we can't really prove that he does write all his raps, yeah, it adds an asterisk to a lot of shit. Even though there's been rumors with other artists, it hasn't been to this degree. Mm-hmm. But they also weren't pop stars. Like, and that's like we've heard, we've that's, heard that's the key. We that's love, the diff, that's the difference right there in between Jay, Nas, and Drake. Those guys are the quintessential rap stars. Mm-hmm. Drake is a pop star that happens to rap as well. That's the difference in these artists. Jay and Nas don't make the music that Drake makes. Exactly. No. They don't make the type of songs. They won't dare try to make the type, some of the songs that, people would kill Jay if he made some of the songs that Drake does. But I'm sure they've had help on hooks too. I'm sure that they've had hooks and melodies written for, like, come on, bro. Well, obviously. Well, yeah, people have, yeah. I mean, that's not, I don't, that's not something that, I, I mean, we know that that's true. Jay and Nas have had hooks and things, you know, written for them and, you know, Things like, especially with Kanye was producing a lot of Jay shit. Some of that, that was Kanye's way of getting some of his beats off was he already got the hook to it, mm-hmm. which is like a layup for a great rapper. Like, oh shit, beat hard, hook is already there. I, f- I forgot um what rapper was doing some podcast years ago saying, someone asked him why Swizz dominated like that mid, early mid 2000s. I was like, he was selling beats for 1.5 million because the beats came with a hook. Mm-hmm. I had to fill in 12 fucking bars and I had a number one record. Right. Yep. Like these producers were coming with something already done. Yeah. Like, I put a, a, some catchy shit about a girl. Here's a monster hook. Some more catchy shit about a girl. And I have a number one record. Right. <laughs> I wrote 14 bars. Right. Who cares? I mean, if you go look at Fade to Black, uh, when Kanye's playing the Lucifer track for Jay, he starts rhyming. Lord, I gotta get my soul right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need to get these devils out my life. All of that was Kanye. Dang. Now, for reference track with Kanye doing that came out today. People try to say Jay didn't don't write his his like this is what I'm saying. It's like it's so it's the same thing. Though. Yeah, it's it's stupid. It's like yo, what it's are you, on camera. What are y'all talking about? Like it's like, but people again when they're trying to create a certain narrative, they act like certain things don't already exist that you can look up and find yourself. So well, I mean it's it's. Tip for tat, and it's really who you like the most. But I could see a purist being like, "Yo, if the producer helped you pick a pocket and a flow, it's not the same as ten bands, fifty bands, hundred bands. Like that whole entire bridge mm-hmm. was written and done a little different than uh, 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 like just trying to find a pocket." Mm-hmm. So I think there is a difference, but again, I think Jay and Drake are drastically different artists. They're, to begin they're with. different artists to begin <laughs> I with. I can't from, really compare the them. Start. All right, I'm again. I've said it before. I'll say it again. The day I get a reference from one of them timestamp joints where Drake is giving us straight rapping bar, oh, then my conversation is totally different. Ooh, I'm hoping that happens when we're in the of studio. Of course together. you are. Of course you are. But I also it's think happen. I think Drake maybe got into habits early. Too, and this is just me thinking. I have no evidence of this. I could be completely wrong, so apolo- apologies to Toronto if I am. I think Drake being on TV and being somewhat of a local celebrity did help him in a music scene that wasn't really thriving. So I think a lot of people did go to Drake with a lot of great ideas mm. and a lot of help, which mm-hmm. is cool. I mean, I think, I'm sure Drake did most of comeback season mm-hmm. in the writing, but I, all the genius minds from Toronto were like, well, he's the most popular one. Yeah. I think it was similar to what Ali was talking about on Vlad with um the Nelly shit. Like, mm-hmm. listen, man, Nelly was about to get a deal. So we was like, you take all the hot shit. <laughs> yeah. And we'll just all go with you. And Drake has been with the same engineer, producers, camp since then. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I can see Hush trying to get on. But, yo, you take this verse instead. Yeah. Because you, you, have, you have it right now. So go ahead and do it. So I think he may got in that habit early before he even popped off of being the collaborator in the face of Toronto music at the time. Yeah. So it's probably not that weird to him to be like, yo, you got a 12? Let me hear it. I'll fix it up. Mm -hmm. That's making music. 
Yeah. And he releases such a high volume of music. Like, oh, yes, I mean, Drake is an amazing rapper, but to think he's sitting up there putting fucking a hundred songs a year together by him. No, bro. Like, let's stop. And not only that, when you have the type of crew that you have and have had for so long, it's a reason that you have that crew. It's y'all, it's a it's a collective effort. Mm -hmm. It's everybody, you know, 40 has the music, he knows what pocket to leave open. You know, Noel is obviously recording most of it. Hush and and, and Drake have obviously been together for years, working on ideas, uh party. Um, Drake, who Drake speaks about, he loves working and writing with, along with party. Um, but again, I think most of these guys would laugh at some of the shit that they're reading. Like, Drake doesn't write his raps. Like, like what are y'all talking Look, about? You don't think if around take care time, I'm trying to sign the weekends, I'm not I'm not gonna have that guy help me find some melodies. Right. You think I'm a signing party, we're not gonna work together. Mm. You don't think I'm gonna hear some shit in the studio and be like, all right, man, I'm gonna take that one. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, it definitely happens. But again, I understand the optics and everything that's going on right now. So, you know, I'll I, just... I see why it pisses off the purists. Um, I know Julian can't wait to shit on Eminem, which we'll get to. But speaking of purists, I can see that bothering a lot of people that have been writing all of their shit. Like when Andre 3000 said on Blonde in that interlude, like, it's coming back that everyone's not writing their shit. I guess I've been working just way too hard. Like, mm -hmm. what the fuck am I... You're allowed to do that? Right. <laughs> I thought everyone was writing all their shit. Mm -hmm. I... This is why I retired. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I had to write all this shit. Right. So I can see that pissing off Pierce. I think Eminem should get some more help. You but... can use it. <laughs> or you could just stop. Well, we got to be fair. We, we didn't hear anything. We don't know what this sounds like. This looks like enough for me. Yeah, but we don't We don't know what it sounds like. We don't know what this is, what, what Eminem has given us on this Houdini project. This comes out tonight, right? This is a single. I, I think it's a single. Single. Because I think the name of the album is Death of Slim Shady. No? Great. Yep. Yeah, yeah. The Death of Slim Shady. That was the rumor online. All right. I'm going to go on a limb. Should I we think fire? we may so, actually so this is not an album. a good Eminem album. This, this is the single. The lead single for the album. And this is with David Blaine? He just did a <laughs> teaser with David Blaine. Because uh, he's obviously leaning into the Wait, theme of Wait, is magic. David Blaine on the writing credits? Because I can't respect it if yeah, that's like, the case. If David really. Blaine doesn't write, then we just <laughs> he's the worst magician of all time. Is this the reference? So this is the, uh, hey, what's going the on, teaser. Up, dude. David, what up, man? Yo, listen, I need your help with something. Song yeah, whatever ass. you need. Well, first of all, I just want to say, you know you're the greatest to ever do it, right? We should do something together one time. So this is clearly a real is, conversation. Like, they didn't. Yeah, yeah no, they didn't dock this in post. <laughs> with this magic. Like, can we do like a stunt or something? Ooh, trying to trick us with a bad mean, service. You mean something like this? Oh, shit. Yeah, just need this. I, I don't, I don't guess I'm like, Ready, Maul? Why does he keep doing that? Well, for my last trick, I'm going to make my career disappear. Wait, what? Let's go. Make it all Who go away. Who was the producer of that? God, that was awful. Make it all go now, away. Now you understand the importance of having a team of <laughs> collaborators and people. No, nah, M's tapped in. That's why he's the go. Kind of like, you know. <sighs> M Get actually used to be a great marketer for a while. But like, he got old and just... Stop caring. What if his he last... didn't need to. He was a fucking billionaire and had been there. But like this type of artwork and that type of stuff just shows me that the, no offense, shady staff. I know you hate me already that it's a little out of touch. But with all that said, I think M has listened to all of our critiques and I don't think we're going to get the angry fuck all y'all album. I think we're going to get the type of Eminem album that we've wanted for quite some time. I think he's going to work with the producers that we want him to work. I think we're going to get the M album that we desperately wanted for God. I've only, I've, only, I've, only, I've, only, I've only ever had one real critique of Eminem. It's just to stop rapping like you're trying to prove to us that you can rap. Double time shit. I think it'll slow his flow down. Like we know you can rap already. I'm just, I just want to hear different music, different production, different type of sounds. Like I don't want, like don't rap to me like you're trying to prove that you can still out rap everybody. That's, that's my only critique of Eminem ever. And I think if he works with the premieres, the Pete Rocks, like a lot of people that he's been vocal about wanting to work with, but was clearly on his superstar status and couldn't at the time, would make him slow his flow down in those pockets. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't get 
the Eminem beats that he makes with the intention to rap double, triple, quadruple time, and we not understand a fucking word that's going on. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think we'll finally get this. I I have hope this time, man. Would it? Would it? <laughs> if you show me who the 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 production, like the producers that worked on this, just show me that, and I and I could already, you know, what I mean, like I just need to see who worked on it, who produced on this on this album. Uh, maybe even just show me the features. So when the track list comes out, I have a better gauge. But I need to know I the production of the producers clear. on this. I have no faith in the song Houdini. I have faith in the album. Usually Eminem first singles, no matter even when I liked M off some of my favorite M projects, usually fucking stinks. Mm -hmm. A first single from M has really never been that fucking good. But I think the album will be good. I what if his last trick is him just saying the N-word? Julian. For my last, you know what's gonna be my last he trick. He said it on camera before. before. Will your last trick be his last day? <laughs> That's gonna be my last trick for Julius. What? <laughs> You go to come in here one day and everything's gonna be gone. <laughs> it's gonna be an empty room. You're like, and you're not, not gonna know where nobody is. You thought us uh, moving the plant today was <laughs> like, yeah, that was just a that was a start. That was the precursor. Yeah, that was the, that was the teaser. Each right time there. one month. Yeah, this is, that was a teaser right there for you. Man, no one wants. Let's keep it real. No one's fucking wants this shit. And I want y'all to cares? just be honest. Like, be you honest. know I, we, that we've been all waiting for it. Y'all have not. You been not. Whoa, whoa, shit, who? I don't mean waiting. Like I've been at the edge of my seat for an ebb album. I'm saying in. I'm gonna the listen. Second, Don't get it twisted. I have to. You, not you have to. to the second listen half of his career, one. that type of album. Yes, I did. I listened to. I listened to every M album. What's his last album called? I don't. Rory. No, I'm terrible with titles and names. Of what's, what's the name of Rory album? I thought it'd be different. Oh, okay. Mm. That's my. That's my nigga. That's my wigger though. That's different. Did you buy the vinyl? No, I didn't buy the vinyl. <laughs> I want it though. It's on sale now. I definitely want to buy the vinyl. That's hard. You saw Maul is on sale now. You think Maul gonna go and purchase? Put it. I don't think any of you guys. I, I, I'm sure Roy's when the boxes vinyl. get here, you will just take it out. Oh, I will. <laughs> no, I'll buy Roy's vinyl. I'll ask you to sign it, and I will walk out. <laughs> no, actually, I'll definitely Yo, buy you Roy's gonna ask Rory for I, his? I don't have any John idea. Hancock. Yeah. Why not? No like hand. the cool one, no not hand. like the lame one. What? It was right there. I had to go for it. Anyway, man, no one. You guys are listening to this. I'm not. I'm listening. When was the last M album? Keep it. Was it Kamikaze? Was I favorite, think it might have been Kamikaze. Stop I was going to say Kamikaze. I think we're all wrong. Peach, are you even looking forward to this shit? I but I won't. Is no. Peach an Eminem fan or is he just like, like our resident white man? Uh, if you could guess someone in the room that would be an Eminem fan, I would guess Peach. Music to be murdered by. Music to be murdered Oh, God. He should have killed his career then. Oh, he did one more preem one year. Probably sucked. Uh, 2020. Yeah, Music to be murdered by was the last one. I, I feel like M got all that shit out of his system. And I think, yeah, that's... I think he's finally going to listen to us. Just give us... Just give me some... Just some good music. I don't rap to me like you still trying to show you got out bar and out double time. Everybody. I don't need that. Well, we but, know that that's already cemented. That's that's why you are who you are. I also don't want you to out celebrity us like... Or like out trans joke us. Listen, I don't want to be <laughs> politically goes. correct by any means. I want M to be M all the time. Mm -hmm. I just don't want him to like... Since the death of Slim Shady, he's gonna just start <laughs> rapping about all the Kardashians. He becomes like, a woman. Are they transgender? Like yeah. I, I don't want to hear that. So the Houdini single is tonight. Well, if you're hearing this now, the Houdini single is out. Yeah, can't stop. It's on repeat. All right. Well, you say that, but he's gonna stream more than anybody else. Yeah, of course. It's Eminem. Like that doesn't mean anything. Shit. No, I mean, obviously successful, he'll be fine. I'm not, that's, it makes no difference what I think. But I'm saying, like, that's not the signifier of a of a good song, of a good artist. You ever, well, music is subjective. You ever considered that maybe it's just not good to you? It's good to the no, millions of sucks. people who stream his shit? No, it's good to them. Their taste sucks, too. Like, I'm not, <laughs> look, like, this Listen, can all be I, true. I have I have friends from high school that are on fentanyl now that thought Kamikaze was the greatest piece yeah, of art. Look, that ever you did. need fentanyl. <laughs> like a lot a lot of people from my era that went on, you know, to do great things. Ex extracurricular activities <laughs> in no, certain they drugs. They went on and did great things. And I'm really not trying to shit on Evan this, but they find Man, that when someone raps up. really fast, yeah. they like that type of shit. Yeah, yeah. No, I I get it. It's certain certain things are for certain people. And so I'm not, you know, I'm just saying. For me, I just want him to just, just, just switch the music up a little bit. That's all. It was Damn, the, uh, Eminem was the original to baby. Wait, why mm, you say that? I don't think that was the, the double case. time. The sound that y'all, the flow that y'all tired of. If you think, of? if you, think, if if you think Eminem invented double time, no, I don't think he invented it. What I'm saying is he ran it into the ground, like the baby is doing. 
Yeah. But M always had different flows. Once he started on that fast shit is when I stopped liking Eminem. Mm. Like Slim yeah, Shady he... LP, Marshall Mathers LP, Eminem Show. Those are, are M not trying to outwrap everyone on earth. Like he's just making his, good music. His greatest song, Lose Yourself. That's not a double time. That's just somebody yeah, giving like you bars, easy listening concept. Record. Yeah, it's like you know what that type of shit. We all praised them as we should have. That last verse of Forever with Kanye, Wayne, and Drake, mm -hmm. he did the double time shit and was almost sounded like he was a little offbeat, even though he wasn't. And everyone was like, yo, that's the greatest rapper we've ever seen. And M was like, that's what y'all like? Yeah. Bet. Bet. 10 years. 10 years. <laughs> and since it's double time, it's 20. <laughs> it's <laughs> Even the features that he gets now are like, they just let him go for like 36 bar. It's just too much rap. Yeah. Just stop. But listen, man. He's the, still a goat. The song might drop, but we might have to come in here and, and mop up our words. How do like, we say that? That shit was hard. I would, I would love to come in here and say I... Loved it. I'm no, with no. you on that. But you won't. I'm, I'm definitely with you on Julian, that. Julian said, why do we call him that? If if over half his career has been shitty music, why do y'all call him a goat? About 85% of his career is just dog shit. He goes, goat. Is he Cause goat because he sells? Because like, other, let's, that other what 15, is he saying? That other 15% is greater than most rap rappers that you can probably... But some artists have put out one album that has done like more, like Biggie's one album. And also, how many goats? This is another thing. How many goats we allowed to have? Because goat means greatest of all time. It can't be ten greatest of all times. I mean, Somebody got to actually be the greatest. Want. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with you on that, but I think people have their because again, it's subjective. So people have their goat, and people have the list of you know the ones that they can't ever remove from the goat list because those are cemented. So I just think it just adds on. We get different people that add on to a list that's already obviously cemented in history. You guys are going to make me defend Eminem. The same way I was so mad that Twitter is allowed to say Tupac sucks. What's the other thing that's been going rampant? Slim Shady LP, Marshall Mathers LP, The Eminem Show. If you stop right there, that's three. those three albums are better than 85% of rappers' career. Have then, they then, aged well? Then to encore... Refill was bullshit. Uh, recovery was good, and then after that, everything's been dog shit. That's those are five. that's a crazy run. Yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> what I'm saying is, that's if a you were crazy to, run. if you were to play them now, not using your nostalgia ears, if you were to play them now, like to a new listener, it sound better than this half of this dog shit that's out here in the, in the that's ecosystem. That's fine, now. but we're not discussing those because a lot dogs, of this shit that's out here now is terrible. We're not discussing those dogs being goats. They're just. Dogs who shit. We're talking about. Nah, there's some niggas that they call goats now. Then I'm like, who? What? Who? Listen, man. I ain't who? listen. They're, I, I'm not. I'm, listen, they. We owls. Rayvon, Rayvon, Rayvon think I'm a hater. He thinks, <laughs> he thinks I'm a Kendrick hater. So I'm not going to start naming names of niggas that niggas think is dope. But I'm not speaking about Kendrick. I'm not talking about Kendrick in this situation. Kendrick, hey, Kendrick is dope. Mm -hmm. But. If I start naming, oh, he's a hater. I'm, I don't hate on. I don't. I think in order for me to hate, I have to want to do what you do. And I don't want to rap. I've never tried to really rap. So I've never tried to be an artist. So I'm not hating. That's not how hating no, works. No, but some people just be hating. You can't say that. Hating is be, if you have we, some, I don't something play basketball. in you. Like, I hate on ball players all the time. Like You play you basketball can, every other day. Yeah, but like I'm saying like professionally. You can't. You well, can you don't play professionally because you you're not do. good. <laughs> what? You don't play professionally because you're not good. I think, yeah, I'm just not a professional basketball. Sorry. That's not like it. I tried to rap. Right. I wasn't good. But, yeah. but if you hate on basketball well, players. was okay. Somebody would Pull be like, hamstring. damn, he played basketball every week. He might just be mad that he's not that good. Right or wrong. If I was in the studio every week trying to write bars and lay down, make songs, and then I come on here and say, yo, that shit was trash. I'm hating because I try, I want to do that on that level. I don't want to, I'm not hating. I don't hate on anybody. Like if I say I don't like that song, you missed the two other albums that I said I loved. I just don't like this song. I th no, I, That's think not it, I think it's hating. I think anyone even trying to, for example, go to the league or try to be an artist. I think you're only hating if there's an agenda on why you're being negative on something. Yeah, exactly. If, if you're if you love art and that art is just not for you, I don't think that's hating at all. That's not. But, but people, when you get personal and there's a reason why you don't like that and aren't being objective, yes, you're just you're hating. Agreed. But if I say I don't like a song, just a song, that's not hating. No, I don't. You missed the three other albums that I said I love. Like where was it? Where was it at then? When it was like, yo, I love that album. Love that album. That's my argument with Eminem. People ignore it. To Rory's point, to the math you did earlier, Eminem had three good albums. The last good one was in 2004. 20 years of dog shit. When I say that, people are like that's hate. 
No, it's it's, it's truth. He's put out whatever's come out in since 2004 has been ass. Mm -hmm. No, because listen, do I go back and listen to Recovery by Eminem? No. But being objective for me to say that this Recovery album is not good, I'd be hating. Okay, fine. Give you recovery. 14 years of shit music. <laughs> I said Even I said recovery. after recovery, I've hated everything Even that he's, with he's recovery, did. recovery, 14 years of just straight ass. Yeah, but there's, you know, when you've been in the game as long as M, there's a few artists that you can look at that's if they're crossing two decades, 20 years, 25 years. But of, then don't put them in the GOAT conversation. Stop. If I had eight years where I was fucking smashing everything, I had no, four classic albums. No, what makes a GOAT I'm is longevity. Goat. Longevity is a big, to me, yeah. is a big barometer. Yeah. Okay, to, to you. Right. But what I'm saying is if I am Eminem and I put out a classic, when was Eminem's first album? 99. 98. 98. When I came in, I was the biggest star 99. in rap. I was putting out, doing numbers crazy. The same shit that they praise guys for now in the streaming era. Eminem was doing that when you had to go to the store. He was physically, you saw people lined up around the block when Eminem album dropped. And it's different. Like when you hold an entire era like that in a genre that comes and goes the way it does. Yes, that's goat status. Like, I don't think we give Nelly enough flowers. Am I, do I want to hear a Nelly album today? Probably fucking not. Right. I'm cool. Mm -hmm. But to discredit everything he did when he had an, a whole era would be, I don't yeah. want to hear a 50 that's album. That's hate. Like if you try to discredit what he did with country grammar and all that, it's like, bro, like, you can't. I, I don't can't shit deny on what, what Joe Montana did with Kansas City. Does that take away everything he did with San Francisco? Right. Brett Favre stayed way too long in the fucking league. He's a piece of shit, but we're talking about his career. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brett Favre stayed in the league. He out outweighed his fucking welcome the entire time. Mm -hmm. Am I going to erase everything he ever did with Green Bay? No. no. I'll even be like, yo, you tried it with the Jets. Mm -hmm. But it Vikings, you even you caught a little steam. Yeah. But I get what, and I agree with you, but Julian isn't trying to eat, but it's not, it's not calling him a goat is not erasing everything that he did. There's, there's you having an amazing run and you owning an era and you being one of the greatest artists of all time. Because when you're saying greatest, that means you're comparing to other rappers. So if we're comparing you to the other greats who have also had super long careers and 14 of it isn't dog shit, are you a goat? Also. I'm not saying this is not how I feel, but it is worth a question that people have had the question of, did he have, was he in the great white hope conversation of, yes, he sold that much because he was a white rapper. That yeah. goes without saying. He has a whole song called White America where he says, I, if I wasn't white, I would have sold half. Like I, he, he, so we all, are you That's a, not a combo. Whoa. I think we even, everyone in the world knows that if M was not a white guy with blonde hair, no, he may, he may be cannabis. It, it could be drastically different, mm. but are can we have like real conversations? He's white. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we can't, can't change that. Yeah, if, no, if he went black, he may have ended up being just some underground artist that we did not know. I agree with you there, but I'm also dealing with the same people that say, yo, if Big didn't die, Jay wouldn't be Jay. All right, can we deal with what actually happened in the world? Right. M which became is, a superstar crazy and Jay that. became Jay. Like, yeah, I, 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 we could sit here all day with hypotheticals. Yeah, if M was black, I don't know if it would have worked with what Dre was doing. Fucking sticking nine inch needles in your eyelids. No, I don't know if that would have worked with a black guy at that time. So that's what, but that brings up like, okay, so you're a gimmick. So part of your career uh, and your success is you being a gimmick. So again, when people are questioning, like Julian, if he's a goat, this is, these See, are factors that people need to think about. Here's the thing. Okay, gimmick with M. I'm going to give pushback because I do think his gimmick was being a dirty mid Midwestern poor white. Yes. And I think that's exactly who he was. And I think that spoke to a lot of fucking people. A majority of this country is dirty, poor whites. For sure. <laughs> so, yes, did they, did they probably America. add some sauce to that with the machine? For sure. But I think M came in as a rap nerd that was a dirty, <laughs> poor kid from Kansas City and from Detroit and just spoke for a whole culture. I'm not even talking about how he was marketed. I'm really just talking about what he's saying. He's not saying shit. For he someone did that has a whole shit bunch of sure, words, he's not saying a damn he thing. A this is saying anything. Listen, I'm one of the people that says that Eminem is one of the greatest, uh, has one of the best flows or one of the best Eminem rappers. Is a, of Eminem is a goat. We don't even have to. That's not debatable. He's I mean, I just I feel like I think it is debatable. I just bought up mad reasons why you should debate it, but you can't debate Eminem, Eminem or Drake. As far as what artists, artists, Drake. Drake. As far as rap ability, M, Drake. But, but I may want to hear the the uh, the shittier out. version. <laughs> I, Drake. 
Why? If you get into the technical of rap, I don't also always want to hear the guy that's the best at technically rapping. Yeah, I don't want to hear that shit. But that's what I was in reference to the best, the person who's the best at technically. Eminem is a drastically better rapper than Drake. Yes, he rhymes. But I don't care to hear that sometimes. Floyd Mayweather is the greatest technical box of all time. Muhammad Muhammad Ali is the greatest fighter of all time. Yeah. No worries now. Rory, you know it's warmer now, Mm. which means it's time to plan vacations and trips and things like that. It's a fact. That can stress you out a little bit. It can. Now, what I did was I lit up some of that cereal milk pre-roll. I had everything booked in 10 minutes. Maul, that's perfect because for a limited time, Mood is giving our listeners a free THCA pre-roll and 20% off your first order. Just visit hellomood.com and use our code Rory Maul. Mood's potent product lineup is the perfect companion for whatever you have planned for this summer, even if it is that trip, man. Listen, long flights, I like mm. to pop one of those chill-out gummies. Okay. Set you right in the mood, relax, yeah. you can just be comfortable. And even in the, the middle flight. seat. Yeah, even in the middle seat. However you like to take TAC, Mood has you covered. Great for both beginners and veterans such as myself. They have great tasting gummies, classic flour, convenient pre-rolls, and so much more. Add more relaxation to your summer plans with Mood. For a limited time only, get 20% off your first order and a free THCA pre-roll. Just go to hellomood.com and use promo code Rory Mall. That's hellomood.com, code Rory Mall for 20% off your order and a free THCA pre-roll. Um, before we get out of music, though, um, there was a bunch of tweets from DJ Head, Daylight, oh, Hello. Right like, just, you know, the, the <laughs> typical uh, Kendrick's about to drop something Twitter crew. Did Ray Vaughn tweet something? Yeah, it was dope. Clearly. Nah. <laughs> I fuck with Ray Vaughn. I don't know him, but I think, I think he's dope. I think he's a talented rapper, too, but I stopped myself from replying. Th- therapy's working well on me. Do you want to yep. give some context? Because you've mentioned him a few times. I don't think many people have seen the tweet. Oh, he just Ray Vaughn tweeted, uh, that mall, dude. He's probably still going. I'm sure if we refresh right now, he's still tweeting. Is obsessed with hating on ADOT. I don't know who ADOT is, but... And it's weird as fuck. Only time I see him go viral is hating. Mm. Well, that means you just not... You need glasses or... I don't know, different Wi-Fi. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe. listen, man. And also, hating goes viral. It doesn't mean that I hate all day. You came across a clip. And the I wasn't biggest hating. rap beef and we've ever been around for. Was, was that hating? Because I said Good Kid, uh, Mad City isn't a number seven album of all time. Was that no, because I, I don't agree think with hating. you. I don't think people have that as their number seven rap album of all time. So how, number seven album of all time? I don't think that's hate. But again, people don't have the word, the correct word sometimes to use. So when you don't know what to say, insert hate. And it's kind of like guys are taking pictures. They don't know what to do with their hands. They kind of just like hold their wrist. Like it's kind of like the same shit. Um... <sighs> I have nothing against Rayvon. I don't even know if this was his angle on anything. But everyone that is saying podcasters are catching a lick off this whole Drake and Kendrick thing and we getting views off this, y'all are catching licks off talking about us talking about other shit. So we're all in the same ecosystem. So shut up. Mm-hmm. We're all guilty of it. Everyone wants to go viral. <laughs> but also like... We're, we're all catching steam from talking about the biggest topic ever. Cool. Bet. We're all in the same boat. Sorry that the two biggest artists of their generation went, had a battle and we spoke about it. Because even though I disagreed with Maul because we have a podcast and we argue about a lot of shit, even with me disagreeing with him, you guys all caught a lick off your disagreements with him. That is true. So, everybody, shut up. If he's hating and if he's catching a lick or if he's doing something crazy, y'all are reacting in the exact same way we're reacting to what's going on. I'm not You mad. are in the same boat as us. Everybody sucks dick. Shut up. Different dicks. I'm not. Uh, well, oh, I, I don't know uh, what that is. All right, but my bad. I, I don't. She said everybody's sucking dicks. That was, different dicks. Well, yeah, I'm I mean, not sucking no dicks. I, I don't know what that is. I'm just in reference to when people are saying, oh, you glazing, you glazing, you glazing. Okay, then if, that, people if, don't if, know, if that's people, glazing, then we're all glazing just different dicks. They're glazing Kendrick. I can say that. That's, yeah. It's the same if, if, if that's the case because I feel like this person won you feel like this so I can say that's great it's just all stupid that's why I laughed when Rayvon said what he said like it's just something to laugh at like alright fam do you think that's hating because I don't think Good Kid Mad City is a number seven album of all time I don't know what to tell you I just want people to find the right words to insert when talking about me in particular because well, a would, hater I've never been so. what word would you think that they what word do you think they should use when speaking about me mm-hmm uh, vegan, the realest nigga they ever met, or didn't? No, he? but for real, Ma. Instead of calling you a hater when they're <laughs> if they're disagreeing with you, That's what do you? What word do you think they should use? A contrarian. I'll throw one out there. Contrarian. Don't call me that. Why not? 
because I'm not a contrarian. Well, in yeah. this case, you are because, it, like, we've all agreed, everyone in this room <laughs> and the internet. Royce said Maul was being weird and then explained that he's just a loyal person. That's what made me laugh. <laughs> Like Royce's you, whole explanation just, was, yo, actually, nah, Maul's just mad loyal. I was like, wait, so that's why you... But this is why I laugh when people say things about me, because you're not, you're going to start reaching when you try to find something negative to say about me, because I'm not a negative person. I just said so, the word, vegan. So, well, yeah. But when you say hating, <laughs> I laugh at that, because it's like, bro, I don't care enough to hate on anybody we're talking about. Contrarian. I don't care about none of that shit. I think he's a contrarian. Contrarian. A person who opposes or rejects popular opinion, especially in stock exchange dealing. Well, basically, you're opposing or rejecting popular opinion. Everybody I, of yeah, notoriety, including Ray Vaughn, everyone of notoriety, I have seen talk about Maul and his rants for Drake have done the exact same thing in their past. Every last one of them that I've seen that we of know course. that's had the check that I've seen of has course. done the exact same thing of as course. far as that word that I cannot pronounce because I went to public school. Of course. Say it. No, but being a contrarian... Thank you. There it is. Well, Thanks, Yomi. The reason why I use that word is because to, to the, the definition Demaris just read, the popular opinion is Kendrick Wan. Yeah. And the world knows Kendrick Wan, except Maul. So the contrarian is to be like counterculture. I could tweet I could tweet right now. You'll see people agreeing with me. Of so course. It's not just me. Well, there's a whole you know, and there's, there's people community. people that like Eminem's music, too. We've discussed And there's how, people that think Kendrick has a dope record out right now. You don't... Uh, see, I'm not, that's I don't why think that, that record is with you. You don't think Not Like Us is a great record? No, a great record? Absolutely not. Okay, well, that's a contrarian. <laughs> Thank yo, you. Yo, me <laughs> contrarian. No, I just don't think it's a great record. It's cool. I think it's a great record. Okay, what was the, what was the last great record you heard? The last great record I heard? Mm -hmm. um, Outside of Family Matters. I want to, I just, I'm trying to gauge what he thinks Outside great of, is. All of For All the Dogs. Yeah. Um, Bravo by Nick Grant. Great record. Smart. Great song. Well, that was, yeah. Great record. If you really listen to that record, amazing record. I can't find this tweet. I did want to screenshot it, and I thought I did, but somebody tweeted earlier today or last night that the hip-hop stands have taken over hip-hop Twitter. Kind of like what we're <clears throat> arguing about, me saying everyone that was putting comments under your shit has done the same thing when yeah. it comes to hip-hop Twitter. People that are passionate about this shit and want to argue about it in a passionate way. Yeah. We've all been overtaken by the the stand culture. Yep. It it was clear in this entire Drake and Kendrick battle. We watched both of those communities dig every last bit of dirt you could find on both of them, all for the sake of just stand culture. Mm. Nobody was arguing music. Nobody was arguing any of that shit. As a hip hop Twitter nerd, I've been here since 08. We've been infiltrated. And I did nothing about it. Yeah. The stands won. I didn't even know that they were like music debates are done. Yeah, they are. Done. It, it's been done. When Ken, when Kendrick, I knew Drake had stands, but when I started getting harassed by Kendrick stands, I was like, oh, he doesn't even come out. Y'all are standing somebody who don't even be outside. Oh, that's like not. That. That's not. But see, that's not what that is. And I said this weeks ago. No, I'm not talking about people who just hate Drake. I'm talking about actual. Kendrick A lot of stands. people just became Drake and Kendrick stands because this was the thing yeah. to stand about at the moment. Yes, and they're still sitting there. <sighs> But like there are real damn, Kendrick stands. Kendrick put out this this OD thing is crazy. <laughs> Wait, Drake has rapped on Dilla beats. Like, cool. Oh, it's stand culture overtook everything. In conclusion, um, I but, love I, it, but I did see shout out to DJ Head, um, Daylight, everybody. I'm fucking around, but you guys are the ones that we all look at now. When you tweet eyes, we're like, oh, Kendrick's dropping. Do we think he's putting the album out at midnight? When people hear this, they'll know. I think it's the Not Like Us video. I don't think Kendrick's putting out an album tonight. Maybe with a remix? <laughs> not Like Us with a remix and a video? If it's not Black Hippie, I don't want to hear a remix. Not Like Us remix? Who I don't want to hear Dre. I don't want to hear Snoop. I don't want to hear Cube. Who, I don't want to hear... Who on the remix? All, I don't want the entire West Coast. If it's not YG. Black Hippie, I don't want to hear it. Who? YG. Oh, man. Not YG. Nah, YG would skate on that, that beat, though. Oh, come that on. It's a, it's a mustard beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's what? a mustard beat. That should have been his song. <laughs> I'm sure it was. <laughs> yeah. I know YG heard that shit like Damn. mustard. What the fuck? So they got a remix to Not Like Us? No, I think they got a video. I don't think I, I have no info. I'm just guessing. <laughs> I only said remix because what were those lyrics that it's too Punch tweeted? <laughs> oh, uh, Punch tweeted um, uh, some Biggie lyrics. Oh, that was. Oh. sound like Sasquatch feet, thunder, Somebody and chicken in the concrete. 
did Biggie really write it though? Mm. Maybe Kendrick wrote that for Big in '94. All right, is that Glazer? How? Wait, tweeting Big lyrics? No. Okay. How's that a glaze? Wait, tweeting lyrics is glazing know. now? I, I, fam, I don't know. Well, delete my entire. I Twitter. guarantee you, if I tweet something right now like that, they gonna say I'm glazing. Yeah, but you're not. Punch from TDE. What the fuck does that mean? Those, you're a mall that's from like, OVO. No. <laughs> I'm all from, I'm all Can you wrong. change your Twitter handle to that? <laughs> that was his artist at one point. That's like family. Like that's like his family. That was so, his artist. All right. So if I if I if I tweet any lyric from anybody, is that glazing? No. So you want me? I don't think tweeting lyrics at do, all is glazing. Do you want? Do you Unless you like, see, you go a little. You want to see me tweet lyrics right now? Watch how many niggas can say, you, "Yo, he glazes." So people tomorrow. Ooh, what can lyrics? See? What lyrics? What lyrics? Can you tweet any lyrics? lyric? It can be from anybody, and I'm glazing. Can you tweet a lyric so during this so when people hear it tomorrow, they'll understand why you made this tweet, and they'll because by the time say you tweet it now, there'll be all this fan theory and like, "Oh, malls are crashing out, OVO dick suckers, all that." They'll do all that in real time. Yeah, but come tomorrow. They'll see, they'll listen to this and be like, oh, they were just fucking with us. You should just tweet Mother I four times. Mm. <laughs> tweet anytime, any... Put Mother I. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of it. <laughs> Glazing. <laughs> Niggas gonna put knee pad emojis all in my comments. Oh, they got knee pad emojis? I don't know. They gonna Yo, find them. You know? When they come to me, when they come to me tweet anything, they gonna find it. It's like, fam, I can't even, like, lyrics? <laughs> I'm not, I promise I'm not trying to clown on Drake, but that setup is so fucking funny to me. He's like, yeah, you know, my mom came over today and she was like, yo, mother, I, oh, fuck, he got molested. Mother, I. That's what happens when your mom oh, comes over? me, I just made the whole connection. <laughs> <laughs> that's that one record where you talk about getting molested. Y'all niggas skated right think, over there. You think that's what hit Drake when his mom walked in the door? Like, of damn, course. yo, can you? He said it. So yeah, that's what happened. But yeah, if I was to tweet any lyrics right now, Tweet anytime, any place. I don't care who's around. They put the they put the bicycle with the eggplant. It's, That's a classic. It's like, bro, oh yeah, I'm, I mean that one's, just, that one's pretty a classic. Good. I, I just be chilling, listening to music in like a bar that I hear, and I just tweet it. All of a sudden, I'm glazing like, Neat bam, That's a good one. I know it's like disrespectful to you, so I get like you not. But some of the jokes that people were saying was funny. Somebody said you was making a squirt. That <laughs> <laughs> that wait, making what squirt? Dick. <laughs> <laughs> like it was I can't uh, yo, yo, see, I don't even I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, what did yo. I all right, but what did I say? What did I do? <laughs> I don't even remember. See, that's what I'm saying. I don't even remember. Existing. No matter what I so do funny. or say, yo, you glaze fam. I'm just talking about the weather. All right, if okay, Look. so devil's advocate, right? I don't think you were dick writing, but one could say that you tweeting the red button was dick writing. <laughs> How? Mom. Like they could say that you was like part of the rollout, but like you're not getting paid to be How part of the How was I rollout. part of the rollout? Rollout. I knew it. Everybody knew a record was coming. On that day, five, ten minutes before it dropped. Everybody knew that? Yeah, it was pretty close. But at the same time, would you say that? <laughs> I don't say that about Daylight, DJ Head. And I can't, because because Kendrick don't talk to none of them niggas. No, I, uh, Punch just, he put out a Man, text combo. Kendrick don't talk to none of them niggas. Well, Kendrick, he put out... No, uh, maybe not Punch. Okay. I'm sure niggas, Kendrick and Punch speak. The, okay, the others. The oh, I don't others. Know. It's oh, okay. hashtag the others. Okay. I, I don't know. Kendrick don't speak, and I've heard this from TDE niggas. All right, so yeah, let's let's let's. Uh, I'm gonna start throwing some eggplants at you niggas. Eggplant palm, eggplant <laughs> fucking. Yeah, all you niggas about to get eggplant palm sent to your door. Uber Eats, nigga. <laughs> all this Kendrick, Kendrick, Kendrick don't even speak to them niggas, man. I love eggplant palm. <laughs> Kendrick was, don't even, was Kendrick even signed when Ray Vaughn got signed? <laughs> man, Kendrick don't speak to them niggas, man. Kendrick don't know them niggas, don't speak to them niggas. If Kendrick walked in the hall, they can't even look Kendrick in his well, face. Well, he's putting on for the West, Maul. Who? <laughs> Kendrick, not right now. The West was put on. Yeah, like before Kendrick the got West, here, the West, the was West put is, on. What are you uh, about? has years and years of classic music. Okay, but before Kendrick, like, they had a little dry spell, no? No. What, a dry spell? The West Coast? Who? Uh, I guess between for major Game artists. and Kendrick. Yeah, there, there was a few years. I would say the gap to game was way longer yeah. than game to Kendrick. In my opinion. Yeah, I feel like it was a really a, like a dry spell for the West. I don't feel like that. I'm saying what people I love Tuda and Buddha, and I mean that for real. I thought YG and Ty was going crazy before Kendrick Pop. Yeah, I'm about to say YG. Niggas ain't fucking on YG. I'm talking about on a Niggas major, major level. YG's not a major artist? K he's not Kendrick. Well, even because I was at Def Jam when Tuda, Tuda I, and Buddha came out. No shit. There was also a time like, when YG was had that crazy Tuda and Buddha record and then was quiet for a little bit and then My Crazy Life came. And that was after Good Kid. 
So yeah, I guess there's. I don't, we're from New York. It's been. <laughs> they about to fucking been, get in our been, mansion. It's been dry. Well, we got ice fires. No, we got. We're fine now, but we've had some dry spells. Is what I'm saying. We got cash is going crazy. When was our dry spell? And I'm talking about for major artists. Please, well, all due respect to cash, and I love cash, but that's not the type of artist that I'm talking about. There was I'm a there was the a weird time. Artists. Anybody love cash now? Man, nobody never said they didn't like Cash Mall. You said anyway. that that was going to be Song of the Summer and we potentially disagree with you. Which it's not because not like us is. <laughs> so, and, and don't, aha. don't ask me if I like Cash when you're supposed to propose to Cash Doll. Like, we both mm. fucked up with the cash. Mm. We mm. both fucked up the bag. Fumbling bag. You were supposed to propose to Cash Doll. I was supposed to the like bag, get it? Doll, I, yeah. I was not supposed to propose to Cash Doll. It, you know, in theory though. No, can't in theory that. You should tweet at her. I, isn't she pregnant right now? Oh, like, never mind. No, Julie see? just be saying shit. I don't know her business. So that's why you should just shut the fuck up. <laughs> you, did you know she was pregnant? Yes, Julian. This oh. is her second child. Good for her. Either way, during our dry spell, I think people forgot that Nicki Minaj was from New York City. Yeah. So, like, we've been okay. Yeah. During that dry spell. Big bar. A lot of time, people were like, Yo, New York got nothing. Like, come on, we got big. Nick is from Queens. Like, <laughs> we got Barty. Yeah, that's the Bronx. But we're talking about like 2010s. Yeah, mid 2000s, 2010s. It, it was rough. It was rough before Nikki, I think. Yeah. Who was before Nikki? Like major. Uh, Fr French was great, but French was doing like mixtapes at that time. So Fab, Fab was that a little too but, early too though? Nah, that was a little. I don't mean too late, but Fab was already like established. Fab about, was Fab. Like we didn't have any new, new artists. Yeah, we didn't have any like uh, new French. What about, uh, Rocky? Might have been. Yeah, Rocky. You held but why everyone was years. mad is Rocky at that time sounded like he was from Houston. That's why nobody really claimed that as New York. But yeah. I've always found that weird because everyone from the ASAP mob is like the most New Yorkers on earth. Super New York. <laughs> yeah. Super Harlem. Yeah. Super. So that's why I never always subscribed to New York being dry at a time because there was always something going on. Oh, yeah. And then we, we always, we had Song of the Summer for like six years in a row when no one was coming out of New York. You know, just Rico. Yeah. What was our sixth Song of the Summer? Our six Songs of the Summer? Young M.A., Bobby Shmurda. Um, uh, the Well Run Dry, uh, quick on this one, but The Box, Roddy Rich, Pop Smoke. Pop. You're saying... West Coast for Rob. Oh my God, oh, Manolo sorry. Rose. Wow. Shout out to Manolo. He just took me back. But we always had a record. And it was usually the biggest record. Mm -hmm. But listen, Ice Spice, we good. Give me the line. I'm sending an eggplant palm to niggas. I'm <laughs> I can't wait to find the best eggplant in California. Yep. <laughs> that was a little crazy. Best eggplant? Egg, Finding the, egg, the best eggplant in Cali is crazy. You think it's that Saddle Ranch? <laughs> See, niggas just be reaching, boy. Y'all be reaching for the homo. <laughs> <laughs> we should stretch first. Yeah, I like, feel like if you find some homo shit out of some shit that wasn't really homo, you the one with the gay ass brain. For yeah. He just said he were, the whole impetus of the bit was because people saying when he was it on a bicycle out. riding dick, which was an eggplant. So the eggplant meaning dick, he's sending it to people. So if I say find the best eggplant, you just automatically assume. Hey, you yo. said that though. I know. It was so when I say that, that we were talking about that. But we're also talking about eggplant like food, like. Well, the, yeah, it's it's become the food, but the initial. No, it was always the food. They it became some other shit. Oh no! Now I see. Well, that's a different conversation. I feel like eggplant parm in Cali would be awful though. No, There's I feel like they got good they got eggplant. Good. Where would you Italian feel like eggplant with parm would be good? Here. New, Look, York City. Yeah, New York City. Great Italian restaurant. Yeah, where Italians congregate. <laughs> where we're not, sitting. Not LA. A block from where we're sitting. <laughs> oh, they have some good Italian restaurants in LA. Not John and Vinny's, like the only Italian restaurant I know in LA. Yeah, no, nah, they have some good, good Italian spots, though. Well, I mean, either way, he who smelt it, gated it, whatever you, that expression is. <laughs> he who smelt it, sucked it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was actually funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> I found that funny. Um, did you, this is finding this. This is what I found funny. So this whole clip is going viral with this guy that was, uh, he attended his uh, court hearing via Zoom. And um, apparently his driver license was suspended, which is why he was having a court hearing on Zoom. Wasn't apparent. Um, <laughs> he had a suspended license. Well, well, the judge and myself were very confused. <laughs> Let's just say that. I was just as confused as the judge, the honorable judge Cedric Simpson was mm. in this uh, case. 
Um, so the guy calls into his Zoom. He, yep. he dials into his Zoom. Um, and he's driving on his way to his doctor's appointment, he says. And the judge starts looking at the camera like, this case is about not being able to drive because somebody's license is suspended, right? They're like, you hear the, the uh, I guess the DA or whoever saying, um, yes, that's exactly what this is about. So the judge is looking around like, I don't even know what to say. Let's just play the fucking clip. Well, Julian, I know you have it queued up at where the license suspense is. The funniest part to me is the beginning when he is driving and trying to like show off to the court how responsible he's being. He's like, I'm going to pull over and be stationary very soon. Yeah. Got his, got he told the on. judge he was going to be stationary. Yeah. Got you guys in one second. Look, just, at, the judge. Just, Look at the judge. He's stationary. <laughs> I'm pulling in right now at the second. Yes, I am. <laughs> what are you doing? He thought he yeah, smoked that. He thought he was the most responsible. He's the guy that shows up for a parking ticket in a tie. Yeah. He's that guy. Yeah. Like, sir, I'm here. I'm, I understand. I love your court. Right. <laughs> Big fan of the law. All right. Here, here's where he uh, pulls over and the, judge, the and the judge realizes what happened. So maybe I don't understand something. <laughs> this is a driving one license suspended. That is correct, Your Honor. Um, and he was just driving. <laughs> and... Look at his mouth. He didn't have a license. <laughs> they put him on both cameras? <laughs> uh, he don't know what to say. That's what the charge is, Your Honor. Yeah. He turned his camera on no, in the I'm car. looking at his yeah. record. He doesn't have a license. Got he's a seatbelt on, though. And he's just driving. You know he put that, that seatbelt on before he hit his video of on course. the Zoom to show the court how responsible he was. Of course. No way he that stupid. Um, he raised his <laughs> he hand. He raised his, his hand? hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in the passenger seat. <laughs> he like, um, once the courtroom get quiet and they just start confuffling with papers and writing shit, you going to jail, fam. You know what I respect <laughs> this judge? This judge was confused. He thought maybe his team fucked up. Yeah. Like, there's no way that this, this is this case is about. Yeah. You hear how quiet the courtroom is? Hello? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we here? One minute, Mr. Harris. <laughs> One minute. Your ass is ready to go to jail. He's a you Take your fake Cartier's off. You can look the judge in the eye. I don't get it. Did he not know? Is that a that slow bucks, T? He didn't, he wasn't thinking about it when he did it. He's a, <laughs> whenever, he, the, whenever the judge start looking at the clock. <laughs> look at the judge. Why would he do that? Why would he so do that? Defendant's bond is revoked in this matter. Defendant is to turn himself into the Washington County Jail by 6 p.m. today. Show you to oh, turn you could drive there. In will result in a bench warrant with no bond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's over. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Harris, I'll be giving you a call. <laughs> yeah, okay. the, the lawyer is irritated, bro. Oh, my God. He's a fucking idiot. you know idiot. why? Because that's, that's just... See, I, listen, I'm I'm never for people going to jail for, especially for dumb shit. If it's some serious shit, and all, then cool. But that level of incompetence and that level of just like, just not being, just being dumb. Yeah, go, go sit in the county, go sit in the jail for a few hours. That's the type of, go, go sit down. Because you could have took that call anywhere, anywhere other than a car. He could have been walking outside and took that call. And been just fine. He could have just parked. The convenience of even being able to still do Zoom with the court at this time, I think, is a luxury for all of us. Exactly. Because usually it's like, I'll just pay this shit because there's no way I'm going down to go fight this ticket, even if I'm right. Like, If I could have Zoom and just be like, all right, look, here's a photo. I parked legally. This is a luxury to all citizens. And and the crazy part is he's in the car with somebody. Why they wasn't driving? (laughs) Stationary. Like you, I just don't, that level of just, you know. Okay. He let, really let, wasn't. Let me shoot him some bail. He really wasn't. I don't think he was even thinking. No, I, I think dro- his I dro- bond is revoked with no bail. You ain't got to shoot him no fucking bail. If he's not at the courthouse by 6 p.m. that day. I'll pay his bond. Yeah, he's fucking out of here. I'm saying I have had a suspended license for a long time and been with people that have legal license that could have drove my car and I didn't let them. Why? Because you're not driving my car. Why though? Because I'm I'm a better driver with a suspended license than you are with a real one. But how do you know? You that can't even that? parallel park. But okay, who are you in the car with though? Like were they not good? It's, it's happened multiple times. Friends, women, women. Yeah, um, yeah. Huh. I no know way. some really good women drivers though. Just like mad really, them. really good. Yeah, no, Never heard you are. speak great about a woman driver. Uber drivers, no. But goes. I did get one. I did <laughs> the get, professional ones, right? I, no, I did get one uh, female Uber driver that 
I had to ask her halfway through driving. I'm like, yo, how many brothers you got? Because she was whipping that shit like she was trying to get me away from a shootout. <laughs> I'm like, yo, why is she driving? Five stars. I, I wasn't mad, but I was. I never had a female Uber driver that drove that aggressive and that like, I loved it. She was like, she asked me, like, you want me to like, sl-? I said, no, 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 you're doing great. But I know that you, so, uh, men taught you how to drive. And she was like, yeah, she was the only girl, seven brothers. I was like, oh, there you go. I mean, when I got my DUI that got thrown out, I drove to Port. <laughs> you threw it out? So I had to go every two weeks, every Thursday, every two weeks on a Thursday. Um, and the cop kept not showing up. And this went on for like six months. It ended up being thrown out because the cop was corrupt as shit and fucked up. And that's why I got thrown out. Mm-hmm. I was drunk. Yeah. Let's be let's be yeah. real. Let's be honest. Here. <laughs> let's be clear. He yeah. fucked up. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't that you weren't my, drunk. My court court appointed lawyer was like, Yeah, we're gonna calibrate the uh the breathalyzer. I'm sure it was wrong. He came back the next week. Shit was super accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Can't use that. Yeah. So I just kept going every two weeks and the cop would not show up. But I had a suspended license already when I got arrested. So I had that charge as well. But how else was I supposed to get from Teaneck, New Jersey to Newark? Mm-hmm. Why were you in Teaneck, New Jersey? I was at going to Fairleigh Dickinson University. Mm. Getting some tea. I was, I was in the dorms at that time. And you were just drunk driving. I mean, it was from the summertime and then I went to, that's how long, it was six months of going oh, every okay. two weeks. Got you. So, yeah, I just kept going. I, I drove my car with a suspended license. Like, how I have to get to court. Oh, so you I, were I feel court. this guy. Okay. Like, yeah, but I don't feel him because like I <laughs> if said- If it was a Zoom, I'd be in the computer lab. Yeah, but, but yeah, like you I had to get to court somehow, so I drove there. my car. I think he forgot for six that he months had to court, court with a suspended license. How else was I going to get there? I think he forgot that he had court. This is the only way I can you rationalize being this stupid. You people can if it's on Zoom, you can forget. Oh shit, my court date is today. No, your, your lawyer, your lawyer is. is I'm not turning that you. camera on. I'm getting out of the car yeah. and say I'm in the fucking park. I just like, don't yeah. think he was thinking. I don't think that's he was what I said because he'd be driving so much. He probably for like he'd be driving so much with that license. He probably didn't even put the shit together. Yeah, so that he's level, still an idiot. But I can see how you that would be that like mistake. me walking into that courtroom and pouring a shot and be like, "Yo, I forgot. I'm in court for my drinking and driving." Like no, I take a shot, or taking, or taking. Yes, a his Zoom charge call. is a suspended license. He's driving. It's the same way. If I walked in, took a shot, and then <laughs> walked out and no, got the it car. would be the same as if you took that Zoom call from the bar with my like, key, with my keys dangling. <laughs> like, yo, can we wrap this up? Because I gotta no, go. Like you walk to the car and they hit the lock. <laughs> it was like, yo, wait, wait, hold, <laughs> fam. Like, fam, you just walked out the bar. You walk into the car. Yeah. Like, no. Nah. Yeah, that he's, level. No, he's. he's I'm yeah, just saying, he's, driving on the suspended license is one of the most normal things oh, hey, right, on right. earth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And but I drove to the Zoom court. call for you, for you driving with a suspended license. Answering the Zoom call while you're driving is not a, a regular thing. That's we, we will never see that again. That's like seeing a unicorn right there. I don't think we'll ever see anything like that. Well, level of stupidity is just I like, would take it up a notch. Should he be able to vote just being that dumb? Eh, he'd probably vote for Biden. No, he look like he's probably gonna vote yeah. for Trump. He actually gives me nah, Trump. That vibes. looks like it. that was a Trump nah. case. I'm telling you, he that gives that me right Trump there, vibes. That's that's Biden. That's those. Are, that's a Biden baby right there. Nah, yeah. they yeah. they cut Trump. it off. He probably said at the end of this clip. Now I know how Trump feels. This is this is ridiculous. That's Trump. He's case. actually like he's about to say Biden said that this was America, and you know if I didn't vote for him, I was. <laughs> he <laughs> I was smiling black. the camera. First of all, you got your camera on. You really think you cute? Smiling in the camera. Fucking idiot. He tried his talk. The way super. his mouth dropped when the when he figured the shit out. <laughs> this is so funny. Hold on. And and I love that. You know what I really love about this? The fact that it's an older black male judge. Thank God. Yeah. That that this was because he I think just looking like no. Cool. I wish it would have been a black. Woman. I know he wanted to say you stupid motherfucker. <laughs> I know the judge wanted to say that. I'm pulling yeah. right. Look, the judge no, playing with him. Are you stationary? Second, yes, I am. <laughs> Look at the judge, like smiling, like look at this dumb motherfucker. If it was a black woman judge, yo, this shit would have been real funny. Yes, I am. I'm doing it right now. Yes, I am. And you going to jail right now? Get your ass down here to this courthouse and get in that fuck. They just left the cell open. Just walk your ass in there, man. Just go sit down. Yeah, he's definitely the type that shows up to court, like tries to make cute jokes to the judge. Go sit down. <laughs> go sit down, man. Go sit down. Yeah. Well, anyways. Well, hopefully he's out of jail, and you know. I, I was so paranoid too when I did that for six months. I was parking so far away from the courthouse. Yeah. To just walk as far the fuck as I could so no one could see that I was driving yeah. when I was walking into a courthouse. 
<laughs> thought you, you was using your fucking brain. This guy clearly doesn't have one, but it's all right. Hopefully he's uh working on getting his license back so that he doesn't have to be uh going to Zoom call on and while he's driving again. So, but that's a funny clip. Fuck it, it is what it is. That's yeah. not much jail time though, right? Driving all night. Nah, he'll be fine. That's not jail. No jail time. No, he'll he'll have to pay whatever the fine is. Yeah, he'll spend a night. Oh yeah, that ain't shit. I he'll mean, unless right. he can't pay and he might sit there for a little bit. He'll be all right. We got any voicemails? We do. In the spirit of all this uh, beef glazing. And, and glazing and anger that we've had, uh, not only on the, on the podcast, just all over the internet sphere, I wanted to play a voicemail where we could share um, something with each other that has to do with this and give this uh, person advice. What's good, John? Um, Tay from St. Louis. Uh, I'll be 32 this year. Um Big big fan of the show. Been rocking with y'all since the beginning, man. Um, Appreciate that, Tay. So this is my question for y'all. So for background, me and my old lady got into an argument last week. And long story short, she was right. You feel me? So <laughs> now me, I don't have hey, a problem happens. with admitting when I'm wrong or, or saying like, damn, babe, I fucked up. You know what I'm saying? But my issue she doesn't. with trying to deal with my shit is that, you know, we got into this argument, but could I have avoided that if I just would have shut the fuck up in a moment? You feel me? Like, I don't want to take my lady through all these loops and all this stuff if I don't have to. Like, is that my ego? You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what it is. So uh, my question to y'all is, when you when you arguing with somebody, that could be your spouse or a friend or, you know, business for anybody, how do you deal with knowing, like, damn, I actually might be wrong in this moment and, and I need to shut up and listen? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do y'all how do y'all handle knowing when is this my ego? Is this my gut? Or you know, I just want to hear y'all discernment on how y'all handle with them, how y'all deal with them situations. So, uh, love what y'all do, man. Appreciate y'all. Want to know y'all thoughts? I mean, he has the awareness. Mm -hmm. You just have to remind yourself of the awareness when the ego and rage starts to ensue. Yeah, I think it it also depends on exactly what you're arguing about. Like if it's you and your your girl and your you know whatever you're arguing about, in the moment if you know that she's right, just shut the fuck up and tell her you're right. Yeah. I don't I don't know why people can't just to me that's just such an easy because what happens if you're wrong in a, in, a, in, a, in a debate, especially with your significant other? Like what's what's the worst that could happen? And this this won't be gaslighting or manipulation. This is healthy. I promise. If you start to take the L when you're wrong and admit you're wrong and continue doing that, you put the pressure on her to have to do the same. Because mm -hmm. if you start combating every last thing like I've done in the past, it's just a, <laughs> a whole tornado of bullshit all the time because no one will take accountability. No one will say they're wrong. We're just going to argue all day until we fucking hate each other and we get too tired and go to sleep. You know when you really mastered like a different level of yourself, when you know you're right in an argument or debate, and you shut the fuck up and let her have it. And then like two hours later, it hits her that you're right. Oh, man, that's just God's way of winking at you. Yeah. <laughs> it's just tough to find a it's woman like, that just, would ever just realize let her, <laughs> Just let her go. Let her have it. And then she realizes just doing some regular shit and you'll just be looking at her like, mm. You're saying self the woman would have to do some self-reflection. Or not. I mean, I don't know if women know how to do that, but. I see. He, he getting into a whole different debate now. All right. What? No, nothing. <laughs> Eggplant emojis in your comments. How? Really? <laughs> I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out. I don't know, man. I don't know. Who's the girl in this? Kendrick or Drake? <clears throat> see, I'm not, I didn't receive see Julian. I didn't respond. I didn't say nothing. Uh, but no, to be serious, doing that and holding yourself accountable will start to put pressure on her that she has to do the same when she's wrong. Shit. It, it evens things out in a healthy way. It's not a manipulative way. But, yo, I fucked up. I was wrong here. All right, you right? Cool. Next time when you're right, which, Tay, I'm sure you are 99% of the time because you're a man mm -hmm. and she's a woman, mm -hmm. it's going to start to dawn on her the amount of times you've taken accountability. It's true. Yeah. As the man, yeah, he's definitely right. More. And if you want to get a little sassy and a little toxic, you can bring up the few times that you said, yo, when I was wrong, I said I was wrong. You seem to have trouble with that. Mm. You should figure that out. You seem this seems like a you thing because when we argue her. and I'm wrong, 
I say, yo, I'm, I'm sorry. Mm. You're right. I apologize. Yes, Why right. is that so tough for you? It's mm. her fault. Yeah. And then you throw in, maybe you should see a therapist. Yeah. Oh, you know, when you throw that in there, oh, she turned into the Yo. test, man, the devil, she said that whole fucking house. <laughs> I, think I, I think I'm starting to realize this has nothing to do with me and everything to do with what's in your head. Yeah. What mm. buried trauma are you like fighting yeah. right now? Like what's, what's in there? You're what's mad at your father. It? You're not mad at me. Yeah. yeah. This has nothing to do with the dishes in the sink. It's a deeper, darker. And I'm here to help you. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Damn. See, I never embarrassed, looked at That's like all that. we're really trying to do at the end of the day is help women. Yeah. Ciao. Look. <laughs> Be careful the way that y'all argue because most of the times when y'all are, dis especially if you're in a relationship, when you're disagreeing about something and also with like family too, what you're disagreeing about is how the other one feels about something. It's not, you're not arguing a fact, you're arguing feelings. So when you're arguing feelings, sometimes people will be right, but most times there's no right or wrong answer. Just make sure you're disagreeing with each other in love it shouldn't be a big argument there should be no disrespect there should be no stepping on people's points just learn how to talk to each other so then you don't have anything to apologize for mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying like if if i if we agree to listen we're just going to agree to disagree because at the end of the day if our goal is to be together and to have a healthy functioning relationship then us arguing with each other is not working toward that goal mm. so if our goal is that, then it's just, okay, you think this way, I think this way, we don't think the same. Let's just agree to disagree and pick a way to move forward together and not disrespect each other, argue at each other, yell at each other. Like, none of that shit. This is, like, none of that shit is necessary. And if it doesn't work, just be like, oh, I see you just want to argue. So if you just want to argue, let's argue. Uh, God. Yeah, no, don't ever do that. <laughs> don't do don't that. Don't ever do no. what Rory just that, no. yeah. that. Don't ever do what Rory just Oh, I see what you're doing. You just want to argue. You don't want to find resolution. And, sh and also, so let's at, argue. At our big ass age, like we're old, y'all, we none of us should be with people who don't know how to admit that they're wrong. I'm quick to admit Agreed. that I'm wrong when I'm wrong. Mm, when I'm that's, wrong, whoa, 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 that's whoa. never happened. See, 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 see. No, I'm wrong. I when apologize I'm wrong, a lot. No, yeah, but the when I'm wrong is always subjective. Like y'all like to use the when I'm wrong, like that's like, was I really wrong? But it's not even about being wrong in the argument. It's about being wrong in how you, like I said, how you handled the argument. Because there's some things that in my relationship, um, a lot with my little sister, when you really, really love somebody and they really, really love you, they know your trigger points. And sometimes they might push them accidentally or on purpose. Um, no, and they, they push the red button. The they, way more yeah, they push, they push the red button and then it's, I overreact. So, and my thing when I was younger was, okay, you know that this is going to cause me to become a different human being and you did it anyway. I feel like that was spiteful because what I used to feel like my family would do a lot to me would poke little buttons and then when I start trying to burn the house down, everybody's like, oh, Damaris, you're fucking crazy. You're fucking crazy. But you knew I was going to have that reaction when you did it. Now that I'm an adult, I apologize now. Like, okay. Even if you were purposely trying to trigger me, whether it was purposely for or not, I apologize for taking it too far because mm -hmm. I shouldn't have taken it too far. I can't control what you say. I can only control my reaction. I feel like that's adulthood. So none of us should be yeah. dating people who don't know how to admit that they overreacted or that they reacted in a disrespectful way. Yeah. Even outside of dating with friends and work, I feel like I've entered this phase of, I don't know if for better or worse, kind of an avoidance phase where if it's not, I'm not even like on the big, like holistic heal me tip, but like, if it's if it's someone that's like bringing constant negativity or just a nuisance in my life, and especially if they've done me wrong in the past to my face or behind closed doors, whatever the case may be, I can gladly just remove myself from that relationship and just go about what I deem to be the the right way to handle something. Which I think what Damaris said earlier, like if you have a common goal, which in one case I did with someone, and then they go off the hook, disrespect the shit out of you, and then you choose to not go with that person anymore or talk to them or whatever the case may be. I still haven't changed. I haven't switched up. I'm still choosing this thing. I'm not. I'm just not trying to change who I am, nor do I want to continue to argue. I'm just done with that. I don't want to waste energy arguing. Mm. I think it's just it's it gives me a headache, makes you feel like a worse version of yourself. You sleep shitty at night, fucks up your eating. Like there's so much like reverberation that happens when you surround yourself with those kind of people that I'm just choosing to like implicitly ignore. You sound like you're in your soft girl era. I've low key like the last like three four <laughs> months. I've really been in like a leave me the fuck alone. Yeah, you like, which we have. If we're not operating on the same wavelength yeah. to the point where we can't agree or disagree in a respectful way that works toward a goal, then we don't need to be around each other, yeah. no and, matter who you are. To Damaris's point, two of the people that I'm referring to have tried to do the spin the block, my bad. Nope, you very much jumped out. I'm good. Mm. Keep it. Mm. I'm straight. Because I'm sleeping much better now. Mm. Yeah. There's some people I will forgive for jumping out the gate 
And then some people just, you haven't earned that forgiveness from me. You, you're not that Fact. big of a factor in my life for me to go out of my way to forgive you. No, you jumped out and you don't belong over Facts. here anyway. Stand on. I can't do that with my little sister, though. I have to mm. accept her. Because of the whole, like, family, family thing. shit. Yeah. 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 Shit's yeah. trash. God forbid you Parents stop talking family, family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, for you. I don't for, speak to so much of my family. <laughs> what? Fuck my family. <laughs> what? But no. yeah, for him, definitely just make sure you're uh, you're apologizing and you're leading with love in your arguments, and you you're not saying anything in your arguments that you can't take back because you can't unring a bell. Yeah. Once you call me a ball head bitch, like I'm gonna remember that. You know what I'm saying? No matter whether I was wrong or not, like I'm gonna remember that. Okay. Were you ball headed at the time? And were you being a bitch? Yeah, see, we got to look into those things. Cause, yeah, you see, that's the things you got to you know, look into. It could just be observational. Exactly. Um, But he seems like he has the tools. He's aware of what like it is. It. He just has to remind himself when those, those ego <laughs> feelings come up. Julian is so gay. I like this guy. You don't know this nigga. What, to have that self-awareness and to to want to check yourself and ask people that you, Before you, you wreck yourself. want advice from. Yeah. He could be lying. You could send him some parm. You could be a piece of shit. He doesn't sound like one. It did. He didn't sound like one either. No, he always did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he never sounded like. <laughs> he changed his name to Love. I was gonna say that, that didn't that worst. didn't give y'all narcissistic vibes. <laughs> that didn't give y'all narcissistic no, vibes. Not, no. Now, no, we know he he knew what was coming. <laughs> he tried to get out of the way of that love. Yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> love, huh? Yeah, because at least like Puff Daddy, Puff to Puff Daddy, P. To Diddy. Diddy, P Diddy to Diddy, like everything started to make sense with the tree, and then it was just like. Yo, love. love. Yeah. <laughs> We're just love now. That's it, love. Right. We need to spread more love. I bet we do. It's, it's truth. Spread more of it. We got one more? Yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of chicken parm, or eggplant parm. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is Nick from NC. Big fan of the pod. Uh, shout out to everybody involved. Uh, big looks to Damaris. Uh, I don't really ever... <laughs> agree with a lot of what she says, but I still respect that she holds it down. And thank you. Y'all gotta stop talking over her, please. Um <laughs> but big looks and bears. Uh calling with a pie with a question. Is it hip hop to make audible sounds when you're eating Ben and Jerry's Reese's Pieces ice cream? Yeah, like cool. I'm talking going, mmm, or oh so good. <laughs> Like, just sounding refreshed, sounding happy with life. I'm just curious, because I feel like, personally, I don't question it, because I do it. Clearly, but we know that. I feel like on the low, mom would do the same thing. You got mom fucked up. <laughs> so, I just had that question. He said right, you do that with look, a cone. Bye. No, well, that's, let's that's let's widen it to eating anything yeah. extravagant, because I have a convo from this, but what, do you guys moan when you eat? No. You've never... What I've said, like, mm, that's good. What about like a happy dance? I get the food no. happy dance. Yeah, I do too. Then that's the level of like autism. I think it is too. No, real shit. Like, I think you're right, but um, I do dance. Wait, enjoying your food? Like dancing? Well, you were eating vegan shit. There's nothing to dance yeah. about. You just you ate. can't really be in this conversation. <laughs> See, this is why I can't fuck with you. <laughs> he just ate some bullshit from Spicy Moon. <laughs> came oh, here. So damn, why you leave gotta, it? You got to try this. This is amazing. <laughs> with this fucking bucket of noodles in his hand. It did smell good. And now it he come in here talking about, oh, you eat vegan, so that it tastes like shit. Mm. That's what I'm saying. For just, you know what I'm saying? Like these Kendrick <laughs> fans, <laughs> these Kendrick fans that come out of nowhere the same way. Him, this guy. Just came in here this morning. Mm, you got to try this. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> vegan, it's vegan. Mm, mm, spicy moon. Okay. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, vegan food, now all of a sudden, vegan food tastes like shit. It's, it's it like, does. I just no, it doesn't. Wrong. Y'all just eat. Y'all don't know where to get good vegan food. Vegan at. food doesn't taste. I say mm, this is parm. really good when it's vegan because I'm so surprised that this vegan food is good. It's always surprising, yeah. Don't, don't do to, that. That's why the food I got earlier is vegan and it was delicious. I've, I, the shittiest pizza I've had is better than the best vegan food I've had. That vegan burgers that no we way. had made for us, and shout out to them. But the Oh, he was the noobs, so it's cool. Yeah, that was the best shit I ever had. <laughs> them vegan burgers were really good. I know, yeah, I'm saying. Oh, those that's were my frat brother. Yeah, no, that was the best food even I ever had. Even the hot dogs. Hot dogs were good. Vegan hot dogs. I'm not but, even a But hot, hot dogs, we don't even know what's in it to begin with. Yeah, I'm cool. You could stuff anything with a hot dog. <laughs> yeah. Which is what they do, actually. The any scraps, put it in there. So, how do you think they landed on 
because hot dogs are good. But how do you think they landed on that whole formula? So they just went. There was there was a meat market, so a butcher markets, and there was a bunch of scraps, a bunch of shit, and, just and they was like, "Yo, bro, we could probably we getting tired of throwing this out every night. Yeah, we could probably do something with this. Let's fucking grind this up, make it into paste or something. Yeah, put it through a tube and fucking let people grill it and deep fry it. Delicious. So I've never had a deep fried hot dog. Oh, really? they're the best. Deep fried I, hot dogs are by far the. I best. think you could deep fry anything. You could deep fry a whole nigga. And I think a nigga <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like deep fried turkey, like when they started frying turkeys, I was all never in. seen racism and the LGBTQ community come together. Listen, we're conquering all platforms here today. Deep this fried, fucking, yeah. So going into his off of his question, I had a conversation with Alex, and we came up with the idea that do men enjoy food as much as women do? Yes. Like really? In, yes. Because well, I don't know. I've never enjoyed it as a woman, but. I yes, enjoy but, food. But you guys, Caitlyn Jenner, you guys yeah, um, have a full experience with food that, yes. that we don't have because we are stressed while we're eating because we have to pay for it. Because we're paying for it, yeah. God, uh, we mm. have to put on, we have to be funny, charming. We have to pay for the food. Rory going to bring up how he paid for some shit. Handle the date. I'm going off. I didn't yeah, invent men paying for women's for dates. What are you house. talking about? It tastes great when she pick up the check. That's so every single you know time you like, like, I'm coming here every week. <laughs> every single time you eat, you on a date. You don't eat no other meals. I have I pay for all my meals. Yeah, groceries by them. myself or with someone else. Okay, and I'm single. I pay for all my meals too, and I still it probably no. You enjoy. don't. No, I'm not gonna let you get that off. Because a few weeks ago you came in here and you told a story about you went on a date with somebody and he he didn't he he paid or some shit. I, so don't say you pay for all your meals. That was literally like four months ago. Demaris, I know I've been counting. I was gonna land my point. Okay, shout out to Studio Seventy One. They took us out to dinner. Mm -hmm. mm. I had more fun on that dinner knowing that I was not paying for anything on that fucking menu. I was tasting apps. I don't even eat <laughs> seafood. I was like, "Yo, give me that shrimp." Mm. I was trying anything. I was mm, gleeful. Shrimp. Was a shitty restaurant. Had like five stars, all that. But I hate those restaurants. But I was so gleeful and enjoying myself because I had no stress. This isn't coming out of my fucking bank account. Mm. I'm not responsible for anything that happens with this food, except for when I have to take a shit. Fuck around and get dessert. So, yeah. So There's a different experience between men and women and enjoying food. Rory, me and Yomi go out and eat. Me and all my homegirls go out and eat and eat crazier than we do with men. What are you talking about? But what's, what's more gleeful? When you dance? When with I'm with my homegirls. And I don't got a nigga thinking he gonna take me home because he just fed me a steak, actually. But that's because you don't like men. Mm. That's not... See, you, you ain't think about that. You don't even like men like that. I'm, I'm trying Yo, to actually either. get to the actual fucking... <laughs> <laughs> you don't... Yomi don't like me. She tolerates men, but she don't like men. Like, if Yomi like woke up... species. If Yomi woke up in the morning and all men were going to the planet, Yomi would be like, it's a beautiful day outside. Yeah. You know, that's not true. Tripping. That's not... You don't even know Yomi like that. You disagree? Yomi like men. Okay. I even, I mean, we're not talking that way. We just saying men is like a species. I'd be ecstatic if all men were gone. I'd be worried about our plumbing system, or like you know construction. But other than that, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see them gone. I was asking a serious question, but somehow you managed to make it misogynistic. I don't know how you just pulled you the misogyny to. out your fucking left ass crack. Because I'm misogynistic. Yeah, and that's okay. See, self awareness. <laughs> he knows he's misogynistic. But he also picks up the tab. Yeah. I oh. believe in double standards. Mm -hmm. Healthy. We need them. That's why it's two bathrooms. Mm. But I'm also a friend of the feminist. I think I'm pretty well balanced. Can y'all give this man some advice? Fuck my question. I, 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 no, advice, I liked please. your question. I, I, okay, I, yes. I think women enjoy things more than men do. I think men have Women a very, enjoy food more than men do because women are darker feeding souls. all 17 of their personalities when they eat. That's what it is. So that's like one of the personalities. Like, mm, girl, this is good. Y'all talk to yourself when y'all eat and everything. That is true. Yeah. That's like the personality I've caught dancing Damaris in your doing that. Yeah. Here. That's not like a knock, but I've seen you like talking. I'm like, are She's you like, talking mm -hmm. to me? He's like, no. I'm like, all right. Word. Yeah. When y'all do that, he had me fucked up thinking that I moan when I eat. I don't, sir, I don't know where you're from. Calling from again. I don't do that. I don't moan when I eat. Not hip hop. Mm -hmm. It's kind of well. I've definitely said it, mm, though. I've said Not mm. to like Ben and Jerry's, but. Me? Yeah. You eating dead side. Niggas is too masculine to enjoy I'm, food. I'm chewing. I'm enjoying my food, but I'm like, mm, I'm not doing that. What is that? And All who right, am well, I talking to? The chef? So your eyes never rose to the back of your head. You was never like, 
fuck. Oh my God, this is so I ain't okay. never in my fucking life. Let me say, and I've been to some of the greatest restaurants in the world. I've never rolled my fuck. eyes to the back of my head and bought my fist and said, fuck, this is good. Over a string Are you crazy. kidding me? Get the Which fuck Which is why out I here. said men and women, not even that being gay, but it's just like men and women do enjoy food differently because I've had food that has damn near given me an orgasm. Like I feel it in my whole entire body. Like I really, food is really an experience to me. It's my favorite thing in the world. And I feel like more women feel like that than men. I feel like y'all just eat just to like survive. All right, this isn't a misogynistic thing. What's the opposite? What's the feministic thing? Misandrous. We're also... Miss Sandras? That was my homeroom teacher. I was, I was about to say it. I, I had Miss Sandras. <laughs> I know her. <laughs> she made hair products. <laughs> Taught social studies. Yeah, who the fuck is that? We're not allowed to enjoy things. You guys do not allow us to enjoy things. Mm. We can't even yeah, think puppies are still cute. still misogynistic. Let me, but you, women, but listen, Wait, no, y'all put that on you, us. No, no, but let me tell you why y'all are funny. Y'all would call us no, gay no, no, if we on, did I that. Got it. Let me tell you why Damaris is funny. Because if you was on a date with a nigga and he was chewing, he said, mm, you would never go on a date oh, with that exactly. nigga. Exactly. We That's couldn't do it if we yeah. wanted you to. You would never go so on a date with that nigga That's again. That's not true. Damaris, stop. Don't do that. We're not doing this That's not true. Because they say I yell at you and I'm never yelling at you. I just get it. He's going be yelling at me though, right? I'm not yelling at you. I'm yelling at the conversation. Around you. Yeah. Like it's like. You ever seen Wanted, the movie? It's like I'm throwing the bullet around. <laughs> just, just curving. It looks like it's going at you, but it's like <laughs> okay, around. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's going in Morgan either. Freeman's head. Exactly. Like, you, if you if you want a date with a guy, he was eating, and he said, mm, did a little shuffle on his yeah, shit. Like, you would never go. The shuffle would the never go. If he went like, mm, I'm relishing yeah, in this. Like, mm, this, this is, is so crazy. good. I'm so glad we picked this spot. The you, shuffle would never was crazy. you would actually, you would get up and leave that nigga there. The shuffle was crazy. But if he said, like, okay, like, I would not. I'll speak about the food. Demaris, I almost threw my phone at you. Don't no. stop playing with me. Stop we, fucking playing with Mo, me. Mo, we are suppressed. Stop playing. We are suppressed to be like, yeah, that shit fire. That, yeah, no, that's, see, that's, that steak is dope. I'll speak about the food, but I won't be like, mm, me. Like, I'll, I'll talk about it. I'll be yeah, like, these Brussels sprouts are fucking, amazing. I'll yeah. say that. Like, this is good. Like, oh, this is good. Yeah. But, mm, Demaris. What about, what about like a, like a, oh, wow. Who are you? What Wait. nigga is saying, oh, wow, to food? Oh, oh. wow. What? Damaris, you and I on a date, Brussels sprouts come, we're splitting. And I go, oh, wow. Okay, not the way. <laughs> Look how nasty that show to us. <laughs> what do you, 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 you would never do that? I'm allowed to enjoy you food like, like that. I can't that. do that. Yeah, you did it gay. But me and, when we, we had the Brussels sprouts. You did it gay. Yeah, funny. Julian was like, oh. Like, Julian was like, oh, wow, these are good. Like, we were oh, surprised. Oh, wow. Julian is what, gay. Was he watching Sex in the City? <laughs> he's also a gay <laughs> man. <laughs> and it's okay. <laughs> and I love him. I still Demaris love him. He's Brussels, gay. Brussels sprouts, what was it, like, last week? Yeah. Or, yeah. Monday. Was Monday. Monday. On Monday. And they were very good. And we did not, I did not, ooh, wow. I just ate them and they were delicious. No, you were like, no, these are like, these are good. Like, yeah. That's you did. okay. Yeah. It's That's okay. A, these are good. That's okay. You can yeah, come right, right, They went good. crazy with the truffle. Yeah, this is as far split. as we can go. We split something else that was really good too. Calamari. Calamari. But what if, okay, I'm just trying to figure out a way that a man can be excited without coming across as a homosexual. And, and who do you think that comes from? Mm. I'll give you That's what I'm guess. asking. I've already said that uh, men not being able to just have fun is coming from men. Yes, we as women uphold your fucking patriarchal sh bullshit, but y'all come up with that shit. You know how I, you, just like y'all are telling me what men can't do, can and cannot do, how niggas are calling y'all and asking what's hip hop. They're not calling and asking me what's hip hop. They're calling and asking y'all. And I'm going to take these ideas and I'm going to go on a date and I'm going to say, oh my God, he was too excited about the food. And Marlon Rory said that this is a sign of gayness. So, I'm we're- And I, I haven't lied to you yet, have I? <laughs> and if we rewind the tape, I'll ask the question again. Would you date a man that sucked a dick? What? <laughs> <laughs> or what would you call him? As a bisexual? Oh, uh, we're saying I would call woman? him bisexual. He's bisexual. Uh, uh, rewind say, the tape, no, no, Pete, no, say to the last time media, we asked that question. Would y'all say on social media, a man that ever sucked a dick in his life can't be nothing more to me than a sister. Would y'all be saying on social media? <laughs> no, I... That's great. Yes. Y'all be on social media yes. saying all kind of... A man that smoked hookah can be nothing more to me than just like a homegirl. One of All so, kind of shit y'all be so saying. So my ex-girlfriend is very pro if you smoke hookah, you're gay. She thinks men sucking out hookah tips is the gayest shit in the world. Mm -hmm. I have heavily disagreed with her. Like, I don't think that men smoking hookah is gay. But I think she got that from a man. I think... A man set that precedent. Yo, I changed a gay man. <laughs> yeah. No, a woman did. What? I changed the hookah coal once and like blew out the, the dust that was there. Yeah, and gay. this girl said, damn, I know Rory was like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know that either. I never knew you blew out hookah coal before. I never knew that. I, I was like, what the, was was like, like the that fuck that mean? Yeah. It's funny as fuck. 
fuck. It all comes from y'all. We oh, can't enjoy things or do anything that fun. It comes from other men. Y'all, y'all the are amount so of women hard on each other. That outside of, of women Pause. finding Baisley super cute, the amount of women I've seen in my comments and in real life that is like, now I kind of looked at you a little weird when you had a multi poo. Because they got that from other men. Because men are like, you can't have that bitch ass dog. That's a bitch dog. Yeah, you're supposed to be rocking around with a baby rot or something like that. For what? I don't know. <laughs> I can protect myself and I like to cuddle with Baisley. Some niggas to like me, to, that's the most masculine thing that could happen. Some niggas like to cuddle with, you know, red nose pits. <laughs> like, I don't know. First of all, I have cuddled with a pit before. They're great cuddlers. They're the best cuddlers. Yeah, pits are really good cuddlers. Yeah, yeah great dogs. But I, I just, sir, enjoy your ice cream. Enjoy your ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> they, I they, forgot we were even talking about that. They gonna call you gay. I don't think you're gay. Was it a cone or, or a cup? He said uh, he gets the pint of Ben and Jerry's peanut butter. What was it? You he, know he licked the spoon. Reese's peanut butter. That one's good though. Hey, when's a mall? <laughs> you ever? Okay. No one's really Say good. it's in a cone. No. You bite the bottom of the cone so it's hollowed out and you suck the ice cream through the back of the cone. Julian, I will beat the back teeth out of your mouth. Stop playing with the me. Be <laughs> Yo, I'm still in that. I will beat the back teeth out of your mouth. He asked me if I bite the bottom of a cone and suck the ice cream through it. <laughs> you never done that? When no, you I've never done that. The reason why I never weird. did cones and liked a cup is actually gayer because I was like, oh, I hated getting it, it sticky on Dripping my hands. Well, the pro move is the combo. You do the cup. In That's the like, cup. I thought it was yeah, way more masculine when they got the cone. Yeah. Cup, you put the cup. My in the bitch cup. ass was like, I'd rather the spoon. Am I too old to run outside for the ice cream truck? I ran no, outside I did, I did in yes. my I did it this weekend. The name is the, the answer is yes. Pajamas Why? yesterday to get ice cream. I, I did it this past weekend. Like I was right running, running to the truck. I know, I know he was looking at me like, girl, you are too fucking big to be running to this ice cream. Because first of all, the truck ain't going nowhere. It's gonna park. Nah, right he was driving. That, he was driving. I had to catch him before he left the block. I had my pajamas. Oh, that means on. there wasn't nobody outside then. Yeah, it wasn't nobody else. That's what I'm yeah. saying. There's only a few kids on my block, so I gotta, I gotta run. So they, yeah, they leave Rory's block so they real stay, quick. They leave. They Rory's gotta stay block. stationary. Yeah but, yeah, but what kind of ice cream truck? I was gonna say, what's your, well, what's your order? What do you guys get? So I, if used, it ain't Mr. Softy, pause. It was the Mr. Softy right, because cool. I wasn't running after after this shit. That's some shit I could buy in the grocery store. It was Mr. Softy. Okay. But from that, I used to get the Tweety Bird with the gumball eyes. I remember one time I was about oh, Tweety Bird. That was a classic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember when the uh, when the the whack ice cream truck started coming around the, the neighborhood. And one time I ran downstairs for, and it was the whack truck. I was like, man, get, get your ass off the what block. What is that? What's the whack truck? This? I don't even know the name of it. It was some nigga that like he painted the, the, the figures himself. I was like, yo, fam, fam, fam. <laughs> this ain't even your route, the fam. Dahmer? Like, Who the hell was it? <laughs> yeah, I was like, get out. This ain't your route, fam. You don't come through this block no more. But I, the Mr. Horror, Softy fam. is like a major city thing. I, I never knew about a Mr. Softy ice, ice cream truck until I moved to New York because we only had this with like the the regular yeah. shit. We didn't Mr. have like Softy the soft isn't universal? Serve. No. Huh? No. Nah. Really? No. Mr. Softy is definitely a New York That's thing. a New York thing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. New York City thing. I, I love Mr. Softy. That's good. I gotta get I thought one. that was like a brand name. Like Pepsi. That's a brand name. Mr. Oh. Softy is not a brand name. It is, but the, it is, the, but the, that they, truck? They don't, they don't have those like outside of New York City. Uh -huh. At least I don't, I don't believe that. I've never seen a Mr. Softy truck in California. Never seen it. They have an app. But everybody has an app, Julian. A Mr. Softy app? <laughs> Peach. Peach said it's not reliable. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be you on try, the wrong block. You use them like an Uber? Yeah. You try, yeah. try to have them pull He's up? He's like, why y'all lying? Y'all said y'all was on my block. Y'all not here yet. <laughs> there, there's always That's a cool app, though, I could here. think. Like, if you could find the Mr. Softy truck in your neighborhood and just walk I mean, certain, like, certain neighborhoods, you they don't even have, you don't even need an app. They, in the certain, summertime, you know that they're going to be outside of one of the schools in your neighborhood when it's time for the kids to get out or next to one of the parks. Like, you know where Mr. Softy is at. Mm. Yeah. But the app is a good idea, though. Great idea. But even the bullshit ones, like, you know, even though you get the firecrackers at the grocery store, I, I still grab one. From the yeah, truck. the bullshit ones, as long as they got like the, um, what's the... uh Sponge, the SpongeBob always comes out like he has Down syndrome. He never looks like <laughs> the pictures. Every time. Like he melted and then re yeah, his, his eye is always where his hand should be. Like I, it's, I, my favorite he's a sandwich. Picasso painting every time. The ice cream was the, sandwich um, with the, the, the chocolate chip. That's a classic. The baseball glove and the, and the ball was bubble Yeah, glove. yeah. Mm -hmm. Classic. The, SpongeBob always looks like this. Y yes. <laughs> Like, come on, fam. <laughs> Every fucking time. Who is, is that an olive? Look yeah, who that is shit. that? That shit looked like it fell on the sidewalk and <laughs> he picked it up. But that's, the SpongeBob, that looked like debris. Good, that's debris on the ice cream. Like, what is that? <laughs> Look at this one. Oh, yeah, cut it out. Man. You could buy them in a grocery store, but the eyes aren't gum. 
What I've never they? seen them at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. My homegirl bought truck. some, but the eyes, yeah, the eyes are are not gum. Is the firecracker the best one? No. No, ice cream sandwich. Ice cream sandwich with the with the chocolate chips around. I'm talking about popsicles. Oh yeah. Mm. Obviously, that's the, if that's, that's what the... you like. I like Yo, the, no homo. When my people. high school started selling jumbo one. Hey, <laughs> yo. There's no way to get out of no homo. I, like, <laughs> that's very homo. Peach, we're around the same age. Join too. Remember push like, pops? You don't remember when they, they made push the jumbo pops. one? You, could, you, got it. you couldn't wait for the jumbo one, right? Yeah. You, you'd put two on it? I was I was going through puberty. You I mean, put two, yeah. <laughs> Griffey. That's crazy. The uh, best it was like $1.25. Was... The best ice cream sandwich is, is the uh, WrestleMania bars. Uh, I don't remind me. Uh, Behind my, y'all don't remember the, w, the y'all don't remember the 30s. WWF I, ice cream bars? No. Julian, you don't remember the WWF? I know he don't. You don't remember the WWF ice cream bars? Ma, these my mom like never. These were built made in like the thirties. No, I don't know these. What is that? How What's do y'all not remember soap? the ice the WWF ice cream bars? No, I don't remember these. No. Oh man, y'all too young. Ice man. cream mania. Was that the name of it? I don't know if that was the name. Taste Superstar. the superstar. No, it's called Superstar. Yeah. Taste the Superstars uh, yeah. is the craziest fucking Taste marketing. Taste the bars line. of the Superstars. <laughs> now, hold on. That's some new shit. That wasn't on the box when yeah, I used to was. buy that shit. Yeah, well, and there's I, no way. Nah, that's your, your shit. Bro, there's no way. You could never send there's anyone no an eggplant. Yo, we gonna no send way. you the Superstars. Nah, Who was your favorite Taste flavor? Taste the bars of the Superstars was not the fucking slogan when I bought that ice I bet you love The Undertaker. Get the fuck out of here. Speaking of which, did you guys see Sexy Red on wrestling on WWE NXT? Oh, yeah. That was good. Yeah, that was dope. Shawn First time I ever thought of taking back the clock is on. Oh, that's why I brought when it When I saw up. that, I was like, all right, never mind. I'm wrong. And She's like good. hosting something too. So I saw I saw a tweet that said that old white men love sexy red because she fits into every stereotype that they've ever thought about black people. Facts. They're going to always turn that? it into something. She, she just was at a wrestling event and Shawn Michaels, like, you know, like they just did a video together. Like, why I gotta be Shawn Michaels is infatuated with the stereotypical black. No, she wait, was in the old ring. White men like she sexy was in red? the sexy red was in the ring. Yeah, that's what I said. She oh, was okay. at the she was at the wrestling event. But is that a thing that old white men are into? Her? She or just um, because the WWE and her label were like this would be a good match. that it was also the country music star whose uh thing she went on there. Yeah. I did. I do not agree with this. I just brought it up for discussion. If y'all think that, or not even, I won't even say just white men, men. Period. For Patreon, I'm glad you brought this up, and we can wrap up. I watched uh, Iron Claw. Oh, yeah. over the weekend, I saw it. Jesus Christ! This is the most depressing movie of all time. And to find out, we'll talk on Patreon. To find out, they made it less depressing than it needed to be when movies try to make things more depressing than they should be. Yeah. Uh, to, to Damaris's point about sexy red, I agree. I think uh, when people see stereotypes or believes things about certain people and they're reaffirmed, it just it just makes them feel better about themselves. It's like, oh, I was right about these people, therefore, you know, my assumptions are are correct because these people aren't coming across sexy reds in their everyday life. Sure, they haven't. So heard they a see her song. get in the ring in Michigan, and they're like, yep, there, there's there, there's one of them, it's Jezebel. <laughs> So. That's dope though. Shout out to Sexy Red, man. Yeah, she's doing great. Yeah, shout out, she is. All right, well, some new music dropping tonight. Uh, Belly's uh, 96 Miles from Bethlehem, a very important uh, project from my guy Belly, uh, especially with the times and uh, everything surrounding uh, the Gaza conflict and, uh, you know, Belly being Palestinian. Uh, this project is very near and dear to his heart. Um, I'm happy that he's finally releasing it. Yeah. Some great music on there from my guy, one of my favorite rappers. One of my favorite artists, 96 Miles from Bethlehem, available now. Uh, the live link is in his bio. Um, so download that, support Belly, support a great project for a great cause. And I believe he's donating uh, the proceeds uh, to to Gaza, to the Gaza uh, people in Palestine and things like that. So shout out to Belly. Shout out to a great album for a great cause, bringing awareness to a situation that we all need to be paying attention to and supporting the people. For sure. Um, any more music dropping tonight? Um, it's a lot of singles from what I saw. Well, we spoke about Eminem. Uh, Lucky Day has TV. one coming Lucky out. Lucky Day has a single out tonight. Um, oh, and now if you're listening to this. Yeah, there's it's just a lot of singles. I don't think there's an actual project that's really coming out. All right, well, shout out to Belly. 96 Miles from Bethlehem available now. Support that. Uh, shout out to Vince Staples for another dope project. Another dope project in his, uh, his, his discography. Uh, Vince quietly has some 
some really, really dope albums, man. I don't know. I really like this one. Yeah, this one was dope. The yeah, last, last one. Last three. Have been. Ramona yeah, Park last one, broke Ramona my heart. And then it was Ramona Park broke my heart as a classic album to me. Um, is that glazing? Maybe. Whatever. Um, but yeah, man. Vince doesn't miss. Yeah, Vince. Is, shout out to Vince Stables. Really, really dope album. What a year for Vince. Yeah. Great, great album. Great show. Hopefully Netflix renews that and get a second season. Um, but yeah, support dope music. Support dope artists. NewRoryMall.com now for everything Rory and Mall. And uh, we'll talk to y'all soon. Heading to Patreon to finish this conversation. So meet us there. I'm that nigga. He's just ginger. Peace.